six thirty, October twenty first, calling the select board. Recording meeting. in progress. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Oh, I have a couple of stuff. Do you have some too? I have one. Okay. Um, one is um, the arboretum right of way and stay in that path or in the path. Oh, I saw that. The other, I guess, not. Maybe for under select board issues and concerns. If you get the email about the liquor licenses, we need to go She has three for the store under 100. If you are there any reservations, otherwise, she's going to move forward tomorrow. And route. Uh -huh. Didn't we have to make sure to do that? Anymore? Oh, like River yeah, Bend. Exactly. Yeah. If you just want to do some yeah. That's kind of. I don't hear any reservations, Tom. That's great. All right, Duncan, you said you had? I do. I have uh, one specifically uh, addition to the agenda, which would be I had an email from Doug Mulvey asking that um, we pay that. do it in the dark. This is what happens you don't pay your electric Your email from Doug Mulvey asked us to do a select board meeting in the dark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wear the costume. Okay, um, he specifically we is. Have them all right. With, with Shane's uh, resignation, he is hoping that we could appoint a liaison to the Rail Trail Committee. And I don't know if we talked to you about it or not, but he did. And unfortunately, I have a conflict the same night at the same time. All right. So if we could just add um, liaison to Rail Trail Committee. Uh, I can do that one under select board issues and concerns. Um, this one I'm not absolutely sure about. So I have a report on the town sewer service area that I'd like to provide. Um, that in Tom's report is under old business. I think I have asked numerous times to have old business list the items so that we could just deal with it that way rather than having it in Tom's report. So they would just roll on meeting to meeting to meeting. We'd have them. Uh, absolutely. Be yep. right on the agenda. Uh, and that's what I asked for. And I thought you guys all agreed with that. We did. I I did talk with Tom about having like the old business as an agenda item, but the thought process there was that we could have it as old business in the agenda that's posted. And goes out on front porch form with the one pager instead of it listed below in a packet, so it's kind of on the agenda. But this one might fully be mine. Why it's listed as an agenda item instead of the kind of one of the placeholders that was there for every meeting. All right, well, I don't know what I need to do. I need to make a motion to have um, old business listed item by item on the agenda. If that's what you, you need to do, you want, it, you want it item by item on the agenda? No. Yeah, just like it appears in Tom's report, he has it listed out as you know these specific items. So I'd like to see that on the agenda. You want all of the items in the report on the one line agenda on your old business? That's doable. But that that was me. That wasn't Tom. So it would be here. Yeah, old business, and then the listing as it appears in, um, in the report. Why don't you like it at, just in the report? For exactly the reason that I would like to address the TSSA, and if it were on the agenda item as TSSA, I wouldn't have to say right now, I'd like to address the TSA because it's already in there. And when we get to that, when we get to old business, I could just say, I got a report on the TSSA. Okay. Well, that was my bad. I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe we could do a smaller font. Just put it in. Yeah, I'm on. thinking about a way that maybe. So it, it would just be an agenda item. So it's yeah. old business. And then below it, just have. Just a bullet listing. Just a bullet as, listing. As things, it's just one item. It doesn't have to be, you know, a whole report on it. Just the item. As we get something done, it comes off the list. As we add something, it goes on the list. All right. It's pretty simple. Sorry about that. That's all right. I think that can come up under old business because in the packet, 
they are all listed. There isn't, but it's but the public doesn't see it. Yeah, it's in Tom's report. Uh, I think those go online with the agenda. I'm starting to wonder if there's a way that we can, you know, as we build out this list of grants and activities, thinking about like how to make this easier, right? Like we're going to start soon having a very transparent list of ongoing projects and grants on the website, right? That's part of that working that we started. I've been collecting data from employees and also DC. And maybe with that same transparent list, we can have all bits, all business from the website just to try to keep it cleaner. I mean, I just will that. What's wrong with putting it on the agenda? It's, it's just tricky when you have two pages. But it's all, you know, it's just two pages and all the words. The yeah. packet already goes out on the distro list anyway. Anybody that's concerned about town business has their name on the distro list. So they get the whole packet anyway. But it's not it's not in the it's post not, it's not publicly posted. Yeah. He's I thinking about it from a legal agenda. perspective that it's not if it's not listed on the agenda, someone could argue it shouldn't be taken up as business. I, I hear what he's saying, it makes sense. I'm just trying to think about is there a way to make I don't have that answer other than putting it on the agenda, but uh, all of, I might look in to see if there's other options to present it. We can do a condensed format and just use comments or something to try to keep it on one page. Yeah. That's my fault. Uh, but we can have an addition to the service area update right underneath old business. Yep. Are there any other additions? Do you want to do the question about the web page under? Support issues and concerns. Yes. Or, okay. Any other issues or concerns? Invoices are being passed around. Public comment. Adrian? Um, I have two things. Uh, I was wondering if this agenda was posted 24 hours ahead of time on the website. Thank you for oh. reminding me about that. Yes. Can I can I speak backwards? <laughs> Uh, the agenda was not <laughs> properly posted, and every motion that we make tonight will have to be retroactively approved at our next warned meeting. Um, and then the other thing was, I got I posted about our reimagine uh, task force meeting coming up soon, and I got a reply back from it's unrelated to that, but I got a reply back from uh, Sharon Mansfield. She posted a couple days ago on Front Porch Forum about having 12 bags of trash dumped on her lawn and stuff like that. Um, so she sent me an email and she wanted me to share as public comment. She said, hello, it would be super if you could mention all the garbage up and down Railroad Street. <coughs> it is all along multiple properties. If the town of Johnson is trying to reimagine itself and attract people to the rail trail, they need to be active, active participant in the cleanup and prevention of trash. Thank you. So I thought that share that, and she asked if there's anything that could be done about it. She said she reached out to Tom and Jason, and that they said they couldn't really do anything about it. I believe Jason helped point her in the direction of the sheriff's department, if I remember her conversations correctly. And my knowledge of the situation is that she found some sort of information in the garbage and related to the sheriff's department, and it's handled. Okay. I guess there's like other trash too, not just one trash. So both Jason and I did site visits to her property, which is actually Railroad Street, not Greenwood Street, and the trash is um, outside the right of way. But also, um, we both suggested that she reach out to the sheriff's department. They gave her protocol on what to do, which was follow, and the trash was removed until the weekend. Um, it's unfortunate what happened. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't know that the town is responsible for trash out, you know, that people, you know, there are times when it becomes a health issue where the town may have to intervene. And, uh, and then today, Jason and I actually did a site visit several sites, based on various concerns. We did a quick drive around, and one of those was Railroad Street, where in the morning there was uh, overflowing trash at dumpsters, but by the afternoon they were all empty. So, um, but it was considered, sorry to say it seriously, we did act on it. And ultimately that would fall on the Health officer, correct? If it was deemed to rise to the level of right. being a health hazard. Yeah. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Any other public comments? I, I would ju just say that um, 
I think some folks may come, the dairy farmers over there weren't entire about um, Scribner Bridge, but if they don't, they wanted me to just say for them that they really need that bridge in order to keep the property to be a bridge. So we could talk about that when we get to Scribner Bridge. Yeah, but it would be them talking, not me. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. If they show up, then you have to sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they show up. I bet they're asleep by nine o'clock. Okay. Select board issues or concerns. I believe one of them is the town website. Yeah, I would have one, which would just be, I, I was originally going to ask what the status of it was. Um, and then I guess maybe, maybe I have an incorrect understanding of what, how we're going to deal with that, but I guess it was my understanding that the town was going to solicit the RFP, review it, the committee was going to make a recommendation to this board and this board was going to select a vendor and then the village was going to decide whether they wanted to participate in that decision or do their own or do nothing uh, so that's that's kind of like clarification I guess I'm looking for it, you know, it sounds like so I was operating under the uh, impression that the board asked for prices that there was no commitment to redo this website. That's my understanding from the initial discussion. Um, the RFPs came back. The <coughs> Charles, Shane, and I did select a vendor that seems to fit the name of Johnson the best. Uh, Charles is writing up a quick report on that. That's going to come back soon. And it felt like that should best go to the village and the town because it was asked to be just, you know, just it was asked to be on the joint agenda, the website. So if that's not the first place for that report to go, then we should put it out to the Well, I guess I would look to my fellow select board members. What what did we decide to do? And am I wrong in thinking that we decided we were going to put out an RFP? I think you're right in the whole process. It would be nice to know in the joint meeting what the village's palatability is, cost-wise. Right whatever and then we can have the report to us for our next select board meeting and make a decision then but if there i guess i don't want to overcomplicate the process if if this group has come up with a proposal and a recommendation for who should do it at this point i think we should pull the plug on that and invite the invite the participation of the trustees to financially participate. I guess what I don't want to have happen is have them look at all the RFPs and come up with a different conclusion or a different recommendation on what we might decide and muddy the waters. The board's it's no secret that we've been looking for a new website for a while, and uh, they, it, it doesn't appear as if they've. Uh, really reached out for a lot of participation, I think. They asked for it to be an agenda item on the joint meeting, which is another topic down below. Yes, I understand that, but why did it take so long? Prior to that, to your point, Mike, they had basically said um, that they, they didn't have any money and didn't want to participate. And tried to talk and, about they, the and, they, and they would revisit the question when we found out how much it was going to cost and right. what the cost share was going to be. So I guess I've been laboring under the understanding that we would pick a vendor and they would decide whether they wanted to contribute some amount of money to it. I agree with that. But yeah, I I still think we picked the vendor. Yeah. At the joint meeting, topic would be. Or do you want to participate 50 50 and what's your cap on cost? We don't need to go by their cap on cost, but potentially we could ex accept a more expensive vendor if they were interested, but we would still be selecting the vendor. Maybe I'm mudding the waters too much. Yeah, it's going to make it more complicated. Well, I think the thing that gets difficult about that is if, if the village all of a sudden wants to have a whole bunch of additional bells and whistles, for their needs, then that could 
entirely changed the request for proposal and the amount of the cost. I mean, Charles really put a lot of work into the vendors so that those who actually solicited and or came back with bids, I think those numbers are actually a worst case. Many of them are a worst case scenario where they have more thousand dollars and the price is going to be less, you know, based on the follow up conversations after the bids came in. So I think it would be unlikely that the village would, would be able to raise up those prices. I think if anything, it would go down. And if anything, actually, part of this does impact them because the vendor that we thought was the number one vendor actually you can act if there's down the road they can actually people have can customers for electric water and sewer can actually see their bills online as opposed to we can just pay them now but they can actually see them and pay them and the clerks that i talked to about 30 percent of those customers did use it that way. So it kind of does impact them. I don't, I'll write the report. I don't know what you want to do. I think the report should just come to the board and the joint meeting topic should be, do you want to pay? Right. So the, the RFP included um, the website yeah. having those, those. Not that, not that part. The, the website included being able to fill out form, being able to fill forms out right there, like dog license and stuff like that. That would be something else that they would add on, but it it is possible with that vendor where it's not with the other. So I thought they'd be interested. I don't know what you want. We did encourage them to look at our website, to replicate features and improve upon them. So that like right now we have a bill pay feature and then on a very disconnected page, you can look at your bill. By scrolling to 1300 pages or whatever, you know, so it's just we have a feature now that's very dis disconnected. And this company has a way that you can just like pull up your account and do it. But, but that that like, feature is not our problem. We don't, it is, we don't, but it was like it. it makes sense for them to comment on it because we did ask them to go to our current page and replicate it. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what's your suggestion, Tom? You know, I will, my memory is probably wrong, but I was under the impression that we were just getting numbers to put into a budget. And if we had the money now, we might do it now. But if the worst case scenario, we wait till after July 1st to do the budget. And that's why I thought the timing was now with the joint meeting, the timing was now for selecting a vendor. If we, I think whether we go with the village or not, I think the same vendor still applies for, for us moving forward. And I think really it's just, Hey, this is what we want. Are you willing to pay half? Of it? I mean, that's kind of my thought on it. And if you're either going to come along for the ride or you're not, and if you're not, well, we're taking Tom Johnson with us. You know, Tom Johnson there now. <laughs> that's what it feels like. I don't know if that's the case. So you and Charles are happy with the vendor. Yeah, come and, up with. and Shane. Yeah, and Shane. So, when is your report going to be to Tom? I was planning on making it as available for the village meeting, meeting but I can have it, um, you know, I'm, I'm going away. But I mean, if it's not going to be for this meeting, I could easily have it before your next meeting. Okay. And then you could propose it to them after as a fait accompli. You know? right. Yeah. Well, this should be done as quick as possible. We've been dragging the feet here for a while. But I, I think Tom is right that. We don't currently have the money in the budget to pull the trigger on developing a new website. So if we're going to do it, it's certainly appropriate to have it built into our next budget, or we can look at the potential surplus and decide whether or not we want to spend some of that money on, on building a new web page. Can we talk about the numbers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> they, they, they ranged drastically. I think it's like five thousand. It's like it's like five. The 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 top two were Davis, uh, which was the young woman that was here, and and uh, Town Web. They're the ones who have eight hundred towns. The other ones were basically. Based along the same lines as Davis, but they went up drastically in price to what was it, like $110,000? Uh, I, I read 
wrote Tom Webb. Tom Webb felt the best. Like Davis was great. Tom Webb was great. Tom Webb felt the best because it was scalable as the town grows, but it also did everything we needed tomorrow. And that, whereas I think that was kind of the idea. They filled, whereas some of the other ones, and including Davis, didn't hit all the RFPs. Town Web did, plus it has a lot of other, like they're constantly upgrading. Yeah. If you go the other way, it's a situation where we would have to know what the upgrades are that we need, as opposed to them saying, hey, here's these upgrades, you want them. So it's a little, it's a. It you have a firm number at all for the one you agreed on? I want to say, my mind is 5,700, but it, I think it was 5,000. Yeah, it was like around 57. And we were going to drop some features because they offered more than we needed. So I right. Think, that's why I think it's closer to 5,000. I think, it, yeah, because we were going to drop one of the features we didn't need. So you it's mean like, to tell me we can't find 5,000 to get a modern website? <laughs> we have to talk about that. I've got some in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Five five thousand bucks or website. We, yeah. we, we okay. need to put this to bed as quick as we possibly can. If you're asking those of us who did the vetting, it was really obvious the difference. Remember, I showed you the car. Right. One's a car with all third-party plugins. The other one comes right off the line, and it's constantly being updated by the factory. That's the big difference. And it's the most reasonable one. It's one of the more reasonable ones. And if you if do some of the things that they're offering, you actually end up saving a ton of money because of certain things that can actually be done away with. So how fast can we... So we really can't move on this. Well, not until you if, say yes. Not until we say. I mean, you could make a motion right now and then we could get it done. I, I think we should <laughs> probably do it at our next meeting. But we... Have an I'd like idea. To see the recommendations. Yeah, I'll make the report, and you can see the compare and contrast. And what's the date of the journey? That way, thirtieth. Do I have it in my brain? So that means I don't have to do the report for the village meeting. I don't believe so. You've made me happy. <laughs> you know, personally, I think at the village meeting we we take the approach of. We're looking at an RFP vendor. Uh, do you guys want to participate? Yeah, it's the way to do it. That's fairly simple, I think. I, is it? Not rocket science. You know, yeah. they they basically declined to get involved in the process. They could have influenced, you know, the RFP, the you know what they wanted or needed in a in a website, and they they didn't. So to me, at this point, it's just a question of. Here's what we're going to have. Do you want to share in the comments? Yep. I think those like board like should advocate to the village trustees to participate in the website so that they can share billing for taxes on that because it's just going to confuse residents if there's two different web websites to make payments on for both. And do want people make payments? So. And we can, you know, the, the point about down the road being able to do the water, the sewer, and the electricity, and it would save them money. It's in their best interest because they're hurting on that on that front right now. Anyway, all of those things are true, but we don't we don't make that decision for them. Right. Well, we could point it out, hit it over the head. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all very true. The reality is, though, there's a town and a village. You know, if the village decides they want to go on one path, that's their prerogative. Right. I think I would you in my let's let's pick. We don't have to do it tonight, but let's pick, make a decision, and then while we're making that decision, decide if we're gonna ask the village if they want to join in or not. Okay. So the problem is you'll be meeting with the village before you pick. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, but that's just I Do you want to participate should. or not? I don't. I, I think we pick. They decide whether they want to participate. And I think the pick has already been mostly picked. I guess it's, I think it's sounds the recommendation. Yeah, has yeah. been. So you can decide this is where we're leaning at the joint meeting to provide direction. If we don't have all the reports. It's hard to say that. Um, it will be. Maybe we don't bring it up at this joint meeting and do it at a future joint meeting. I, can I say something? Sure. I think I agree with what you just said. Did a report, see it, it's 
in writing part of the record and then you turn around and go, this is what we chose okay. because yeah. of these reasons. So, so make you can have the reasons in front of you. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, I don't really have anything. Uh, any planned purchases, Tom? Okay. Paul, you're up. Report from the Planning Commission. Okay. You have in your packet. The planning Commission. So I sent you all a part of the report. Uh, try to be concise, knowing how much you guys have to read. Um, <laughs> we have plenty of pencils. <laughs> um, so, as I was saying on the first line, uh, it says share a recent company, large or small, large. I said, the draft and it's the plan. It should have said the submission since we all know it's not quite complete. It was a pretty excellent So, I just want to. Acknowledge planning mission say thank you for slogging through that because it takes a long time. Um, thank you. The small, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the small accomplishment, the ERAF funding, you guys all know that's uh, whatever it's in for emergency relief assistance funding, funding for the state, federally declared disaster. There's three levels of funding. This came up at a recent plan for the meeting with Ron Jensen was there, and the state had us listed the 7.5 on all their documents, which he was pretty sure was incorrect, but he couldn't get anybody to confirm that. So I thank Tom, thank Evan, thank Eric, who sent you here for rallying when he sent out, we asked him to kind of pursue it, and he did, and that's now been resolved. So we're listed officially at 12.5% everywhere, which is good. Along those same lines, when we talk about future stuff, there's another 5% to be had if we buy. We're seven and a half, twelve and a half, or seventeen and a half percent. There's a couple of different ways we can get to the seventeen and a half percent. Ron is going to come to our next meeting to kind of go through those again for this. We've already talked about it once. Sort of the simplest uh, way to get there is to adopt our corridors. Uh, the Planning Commission had originally looked at that a year and a half ago or so and recommended that we not adopt them. Part of the concern of the headwaters, um, the river corridor is a map to allow a stream to meander, but they've got some bedrock uh, streams that aren't going to meander as you know, needing XYZ corridor and so on. So there's a couple of areas that maybe aren't ideal. Nonetheless, it seems pretty clear that the reporters are coming from the state whether they like it or not. So I think the move the planning mission now is to explore adopting them so we can get somebody from the state to come and ground truth some of the maps and the areas we might have questions about and see if we can get that tweaked a little bit to reduce kind of public hate in the private property rights. Yeah, it basically goes to how close to the stream you can go. Um, but that's a future task for the planning commission to wrestle with. And I you guys with the recommendation as to you know, how important is that 5%? I really want to go after it. We talked about that briefly in 2023. What were the other things? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. The other things in the past were the impact of the maps which were not very good. Um, and it was going to have potentially a huge impact on the other transmits. Um, and as you, but as you point out, the state is definitely headed towards river corridor planning and mapping. So, you know, the biggest question, one of the biggest reasons it wasn't done in the past was a pretty strong concern about what the impact on the village would be with those village corridor maps and whether they were very accurate or not. So, yeah, that, that would we be need to get more detail on that. There's right. options and how we can do it, unless at least impactful. One of the options was to combine the flood hazard bylaw map and the river corridor map, making one map, which is attractive for simplicity, but it means it's Bigger area of this map, we can't do anything in, and if we do anything, we don't want to do that. 
It's not good to be nowhere. It's like down. Yeah, so. And Pago's going to come out with their new Pago maps in theory at some point. But it's, what's really going to be interesting to me is the FEMA initially has come out saying there's going to be a smaller footprint in the flood zones, which just seems very counterintuitive to me. Yeah. Um, but that would, I mean, the, the river corridor maps and the 1987 FEMA maps, there's already a pretty big disconnect between those maps. Yeah. Um, so I think that was that was part of the concern was. You know what? What is the impact going to be? And right. since the town had the option of not adopting the river corridor, and therefore not directly impacting property owners, um, that was the avenue that we took. Right. But as you point out, the state is definitely headed towards yeah, it's river, river corridor planning anyway. So you know, we have any chance to get ahead of it, tweak it Yeah. So my suggestion, I guess, on that would be when we move on next time, take some information. Ultimately, I think we and he will probably have to come back to you guys and say, what do you want to do? Okay. And LCPC has, they're going to be doing, they worked with a consultant and they, they just got a huge grant to do additional work for the consultant on flood. The flood map. The flood maps. <laughs> the modeling. The modeling. Yeah. Yeah. modeling with the maps. Right. Would be yes. Yeah. Yeah. We actually just got a grant from the small communities um, where the three dimensional models that Seth came and presented on. So now, because of the reconfiguring of downtown Johnson, they're going to include the work that comes from the modeling of a flood mitigation. And they're going to include the three dimensional models of flood mitigation efforts along with. Reconfiguring downtown to pretty imagine Johnson. It's kind of a unique crossover of two projects. It's all outside of us. It's all else it is handling it, but it's kind of a unique. Yeah. We're interrupting your report, Paul. I'm sorry. Wait, I'm just off on a So, what are the needs? Uh, we need new members. We've got two vacancies. I've had vacancies for a while, so. Not what the advertising mechanism is, but I think we should do that periodically just to make sure that that's not very announced. Does the planning commission get advertised in the newspaper as well as from Porch Forum? Sure. sure. I believe so, yeah. right? I believe so, yeah. The planning commission is a legislative body. So yeah. Could you do that, Tom? Yeah. Thinking about maybe doing the tape most of all. Well, so the hope is that with the three man and Johnson effort, there's a lot more people involved. I think we can draw some of those people in. And that would be my hope too, because yeah. that'd be awesome. They're, they're pretty active. Yeah, you can see, see, see how it sustains, but yes, it's been a, as Charles said, it, it has gotten smaller as it goes on and not a public community now, but nonetheless, yeah. there's a bunch of people plugged in that weren't really before, or weren't on this stage. You might want to reach out to the reimagine task force for the for the, one. the downtown reconfiguration. There might be people on that. Mm -hmm. We're reaching out to all. Yeah, we reach out to all of them, but certainly. So as far as priorities, uh, short term, obviously, we're going to have a municipal plan that's top of the list. Um, <clears throat> have to be the dead horse, but the current downtown plan is expired. It's expired in September. So what that means is we're currently ineligible for some grants. So it's in everybody's interest to get that get that done. And you know, we've kind of dragged it out with this ATD language stuff. So hopefully we can get beyond that and get that nailed down. Um, EGRAF funding I've already mentioned, that's uh, to come. And then the other short-term one is uh, the town sewer service area boundaries, which I've been really working on. And that looks like that's pretty really good progress. So you'll hear more about that shortly. Medium term priorities uh, we're looking at the flood hazard bylaws. The ones we currently have <clears throat> are pretty old and don't match all the state requirements anymore. So 
Again, it's one of those things we can drag our feet and wait till they force us to do it, or we can try to get ahead and do it ourselves. So take a look at that, and that'll be part of what Ron's talking about next week, our next month with us. Uh, water through line extension plan. I'm not exactly sure where that's going to go once we get the PSSA thing done. You know, we can revisit the task that you guys had in the planning commission a while back to say, do we want to identify areas for extension? Is that something better left to the private industry? You know, that's the question you guys can decide whether that's something we should work on. Um, the whole form based code thing, <clears throat> we're going to talk about form based code a little later of the preventative uh, for flood mitigation work. And that gets into a question of should we look at form based code in general? Is it doing what we want it to do? Is it effective? Be better? And then ultimately work with the task forces to come out of the stream and Johnson. It would be ideal if the stream and Johnson effort fed into town plan. And a lot of it does. There's obviously a lot of <clears throat> similarities there. But ultimately, we could deal with have a task force for each chapter in the town plan. So that we've got a recreation group working, we've got a transportation group working, and so on. So it's not all falling to the folks. Do you have do you have any idea what that might actually look like, Paul? Short answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we talked about what's the proper role for the planning commission. In a planning commission, we talked about what's, what would be the ideal role for the planning commission in reimagine Johnson effort. And we can look at that two ways. One, there's maybe some value in letting these groups go and see what sticks, see what comes out of all that, and just have it be free willing and not under your thumb, not under our thumb, you know, completely independent. I think there's some. You know, there's a lot of creativity in people in town. There's something to be said with that. Ultimately, obviously, whatever it comes up with for grants and so forth is going to impact you guys anyway. Um, personally, what I'd like to see is I'd like to have a planning commission member on each one of the task forces so that we get a report back and then in our minutes you guys can see what, you know, what's been reported, what's kind of what's shaking. Um, but I think it's a little premature to insert the planning commission in any kind of special capacity. First of all, I'm not sure you're in, but there's only five of them. Um, <clears throat> currently, Amy and I are both on the um, We Can Figure Downtown Task Force. Charles is on the Housing Task Force. No. Oh, this Charlie. This Charlie is not on the, I'm on the store. store. You're on the grocery store, I'm sorry. Uh, Kylie Hill. Kylie is on the Housing Task Force uh, with Peter. Kylie's on the uh, we don't have anybody on the college one, and we don't have anybody on the uh, recreation. Recreation, thank you. So we can see what that's plugged in. So yeah. Thank you very much. We kind of interrupted with questions and comments along the way, but does the board have any questions or comments at all? Do you think there's a potential to have a plan? No. Don't leave. <laughs> I, have, okay. I have one thing to possibly throw out there for you guys to consider. And I, I think the answer to one part of my question is, since we don't have an approved plan, you can't apply for an administrative plan grant anyway. It's one of the ones you think is required, that's correct. Yeah. Um, but if in, in a perfect world, if we had an approved plan, We've been talking for years about trying to update our um, capital budget and plan. That was way back when, um, done through a municipal planning grant. Uh, David Spitz was the consultant, and he basically put together the framework for the original capital budget and plan. I think the board might have might have re readopted it once, but it's sadly out of date. Um, and it, you know, that might be something. It, it's always been, uh, I would really love to see an updated capital budget. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we work every year on, on a municipal 
um, update for the highway department. Um, but the capital budget and plan includes library and recreation and this building and highway, you know, it's, it's a much broader document. Um, and we have more buildings than when the first. We have more buildings than we had. Yeah, we have, we have more committees still. <laughs> Historical Society is, you know, is one. Um, so it really needs to be, it really does need to be updated. And I honestly don't think we or Tom or anybody's going to have the time to do it. So to me, it seems like a great idea for the municipal planning grant and consultants. I wholeheartedly agree. That's one member of them. You weren't saying it's a good idea for plans. You're saying we should write a grant and get money for it. Yeah, but knowing that we don't have a municipal yeah. plan, uh, it's not an eligible municipal planning grant expense. I mean, like, for category. It, it, it's Hopefully, a, we will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would that would be great, and I think it would be it would probably be a competitive grant application. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Is the board still okay with the Historic Society being our next committee to report? Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. All right, Tom, you're on that. Thank you, and the full planning commission, Paul. I'm more than happy you were here. Pretty <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, is it is it a duly warned meeting? I guess how many we got here? Is it four out of three. Seven? They're okay. Oh, we got four. four. Okay. Oh, four. I do have a four. Can't talk business. <laughs> Next up uh, is the community economic development specialist report and update. Randall, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can. It's great. Great. Uh, so first off, I guess it's just a question of whether there are, are inquiries related to my report, and, and I'm happy to answer those. And then if not, I have some other things to talk about. So Randall, our items on our agenda seven, eight, and nine are all in my mind somewhat related. Um, that's your update, the industrial park next steps and the reuse of the revolving loan fund. Are you gonna, are you gonna cover? I, I plan on sticking around for all of those agenda items. Sure. Okay. And item 10, I think also intersects with issues that are, uh, pertinent to things I said in my report, but also just in a new item that arose today that I, um, that I wanted to talk about. Could you discuss a little bit about the new item? Yeah, sure. Uh, so this morning I had a meeting with four members of FEMA's community action team. They came to Montpelier and we met in person and had a discussion. Uh, some of the board members, I think two of you were not, I think were not on the board at the time when there were initial discussions with FEMA's community action team. There was a member who was the lead on that uh, his name was Sam Young. Uh, he has since departed from that role. And so in the conversation after him departing and after FEMA's community action team's presence during some of the VCRD discussions, there was this sort of exit planning, you know, at, with him leaving and a new person taking over. We're trying to sort out the FEMA community action team's role in Johnson. And as you can tell, that intersects with the VCRD piece and it intersects with what the Planning Commission was just addressing. There's a whole series of kinds of working items that need to kind of be sorted out in terms of who is doing what and what the select board's relationship is to it. But the preeminent concern of FEMA's community action team was in discussions I think there was widespread agreement of what the working assumption was. And if for those of the mem members who weren't there, and I'll refresh for those who were, originally the idea was, you know, I was going to invite VCRD in, apply for this program. The select board said, yes, go ahead, apply for that program. We were accepted. And at a certain point, this FEMA piece came in. And in that FEMA piece, it was, there was a discussion about what role would FEMA play? 
And the idea was that FEMA was interested in and willing to produce a long-term flood recovery plan for Johnson. And so the working assumption was that FEMA would be in attendance, which they have been for every piece of the VCRD process. They've been taking notes and they've been creating a framework within their own kind of reporting based on information that was elicited in the VCRD process. But it was always with the mindset that they would use whatever pieces they could from VCRD, but that VCRD would not, the VCRD process would not be inclusive of the sort of thing that a FEMA flood recovery pl plan would cover because there's a lot of infrastructure related issues that didn't necessarily come to the, the forefront during the VCRD process. So basically, FEMA just wanted, before they devoted any further resources, they just wanted to confirm, because I think we all kind of realize that the board, I, I don't think, unless I'm misremembering, I don't think the board ever formally said, yes, we want FEMA to produce a long-term flood recovery plan for us. If the board decides that they want that, FEMA will do that. There's no cost to the community and there's no obligation to adopt the plan. So there is, a, there is the, yes, we want you to continue with your work and produce this plan, uh, which they will do. And it's, you know, the equivalent of a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars worth of technical assistance and planning man hours. However, if at the end of that process, whatever plan they produce with whatever agenda items, and here are the projects that we've tagged that you know need to be addressed in Johnson, here are the potential funding sources, all those sorts of things. The select board still would be able to say at the end of it, just this in the same way as with the production of the municipal plan, right? At the end of the day, you could still say, we thank you for this work, but we do not agree with items X, Y, or Z. They might change them or they could, you could just say, we wholesale reject the plan. I don't think that will happen because I don't think that FEMA would ever produce a plan that you all would find objectionable in any particular way. Uh, so basically the two decision points are, do you want them to produce this again at no cost, partially informed by the VCRD work, but they will also be having other conversations. They're already having other conversations with LCPC in terms of the regional flood mitigation studies, all those sorts of things, all of that would be incorporated. Timelines for projects would be incorporated. Strategies for funding would be incorporated. They have a whole staff person whose sole job is to identify funding sources for projects. Uh, do you want them to do that? And then two, somewhere down the road, uh, you would need to adopt it in the same way that you adopt a town plan. The benefit of that is similar to the town plan as we just discussed. If you have a FEMA approved, municipally adopted, long-term flood recovery plan, that will make you have certain funding sources accessible to you and have other funding sources, you'll have a much stronger standing when you can say, we have a you know formally adopted, municipally adopted, FEMA produced long-term flood recovery plan. It will move you up in many grant deliberation processes. So it would be advantageous. The other piece to consider is in an ideal world, in the same way with the municipal town municipal plan is both adopted by the town and the village, because there's gonna be obviously a huge intersection of material and projects that will potentially intersect with both municipalities. In an ideal world, it would be a town and municipally, I mean, a town and village adopted flood recovery plan. And from a FEMA perspective, they, if you're going to ask FEMA, for instance, to come in and have a conversation whether you before you decide whether you want to have them continue, they would prefer, but understand if you can't make it happen, they would prefer to have it happen at a joint village trustee and select board meeting so they don't have to kind of cover the same material twice. But that's just a procedural issue on your side. Did, did that, any of that, did you all follow that long convoluted <laughs> soliloquy? Yeah, my, I did. <laughs> Um, what are the board's thoughts? I, yeah, this is a long-term flood recovery plan. Um, you probably heard me hinting at it earlier. Randall and I spoke earlier today about this. Um, but I think that it would be extremely advantageous for the town. And it, you know, a huge benefit is it covers it's not 100% guided by VCRD. You can correct me if I'm wrong there, Randall, but they'll cover those topics, which are, you know, community identified topics, but I think it's more specific something, yeah, something like 
that FEMA could do might be a lot of expertise in wastewater treatment facility and logistics and all that stuff that just we don't have yeah. people that have been in those industries for years on the task forces. Just different level set of expertise. Can I try question? No. Okay. <laughs> what you got, Paul? All right. Randall, quick question. How does uh, or do does FEMA want or uh, request local input to the plan or are they writing it kind of with extension or how do they Oh yeah, they they I mean they definitely want local input. They that's one of the that's one of the event it introduced complexity to tie them to the VCRD process, but it also introduced a lot of it it enabled them to get a lot of information that would have required a lot of work on their part, but instead they were able to just attend those meetings, hear from the community, hear the community identify things. They'll have a plan from VCRD to reference or a report, not a plan, but a report from VCRD. They'll have that to reference. And then again, there'll be things that with their expertise, they can identify that fall outside of the things that were raised at VCRD, you know, because there's just culvert sizing was not, you know, a sexy topic to be talked about at the VCRD meeting, but it's an important thing that will have to be integrated and addressed. So they will, they will engage in further conversation, but they plan if, if they are invited to continue with this process, you know, they'll have they'll have part of their team at all of these VCRD meetings again not to not in the service of VCRD's process per se but just using it as a vehicle for informing their reporting and being able to lend technical expertise when invited by the those task forces they have you know they'll have people with technical expertise that can answer questions that the task force Forces might be wondering about i mean they have someone you know who was there today you know his expertise is in architecture and he's mentioned this twice. I wasn't sure the first time I had heard him correctly in a different meeting, but he mentioned again that like if if the town needs, you know, some preliminary site drawings or preliminary sketches for facilities, these are things that he can do and that it will not cost the town <laughs> to produce or hire someone to do. And again, I don't know what level it will be, but it's to me seems like an incredible opportunity instead of having to like farm those things out or do without them when you can have someone hit can help you visualize whatever this is you know if you're looking at reconfiguring the downtown or moving a building or this that and the other fema can say hey here's a person on our staff who has this expertise we can help make that happen or we can direct you to this entity or whatever so charlie had one too charlie so randall Did you see I'm confused. You said they're going to write this plan at the very end. And then we get to edit it, adopt what we want, or we have to take it or leave it in total. Uh, so I don't presume to know the absolute working method that they operate in, but they definitely want to, as most thoughtful folks would, they want to produce something of value for the community. They want to make sure that what they produce is reflective of what the community wants. Now, it may be, right, that the community says, we really want to develop this parcel or whatever. And it may be that FEMA says, in our professional opinion, developing that parcel is a terrible idea. And here's the reason why it's not technically feasible or why X, Y, or Z. That's the that's the one thing that I could kind of imagine that might happen, that, that it doesn't, quote, reflect the community and it would be more not based on their preference or non-preference. It would be based more on what they think is technically feasible and desirable or not. Um, but what I but the the sort of decision point that I was discussing was they're going to produce this report again in conversation with various folks. The town will always have the opportunity at the end to to adopt you know say yay or nay on adopting it. I don't know if if saying nay nullifies the process moving forward. I don't know if the town just says, no, we don't approve it for X, Y, and Z reason. If FEMA might just say, oh, okay, well then we'll we'll address X, Y, and Z or not. I would imagine that it would only be over something. And again, I'm 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 guessing here. I'm not stating this with certainty. I'm guessing that it would only be a situation where they don't believe that a particular approach is viable, you know, from a technical standpoint or a funding standpoint you know, cost benefit analysis standpoint, whatever, that would be my assumption. Uh, Randall? Yeah. We, we would still have the benefit of all of their work, just to question whether at the end we adopt their plan and therefore have 
that advantage in other funding possibilities, right? But, you know, they might say, okay, you know, don't adopt our plan, then we don't have that on our resume. Um, but, uh, but we still have the benefit of all their work, right? Uh, sure. Yes. Um, but like I said, I, I think it's, I think it's more similar to like the municipal plan piece where it's, it's about a kind of ongoing conversation that's going to happen. If there are, I don't think it's going to be a thing that's sort of like sprung on the community. You know, I think it'll be a piece in which there's this sort of feedback and solicitation of information. Did we understand this right? Did we get this piece right? Is this what the intention is? And it'll either come to me or to Tom or through us to the select board or to the planning commission or whoever it may be, if the, you know, FEMA has those, uh, those questions. And I should, again, I should emphasize that if there are concerns, you know, you don't have, obviously you don't have to make a decision until you decide that you want to, but FEMA is, to, you know, 100%, their their team is willing to come to the either a joint meeting or a singular meeting, or you can decide without it and just answer any questions that, that you might have about it. But, I mean, to me, it's, they've already been devoting time and energy to recording these things. Uh, there's no cost to the community. It seems, in my opinion, uh, like a pretty valuable opportunity to seize. Randall, what's the timeline for something like this? Uh, they didn't say. Um, I think it. I think it matters. Uh, I actually, I just, I should just say instead of trying to guess, I don't know. I don't know what the timeline is. I don't know how much time it will take. Fair enough, but obviously uh, it's an heavy effect, so it's going to be a little bit. The only other question I guess I had is. How do we have some interaction with them? So, for example, the Great Imagine Downtown uh, Task Force, we don't want to duplicate a lot of efforts. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff they're going to be far better at than we are. So, how do we not spin our wheels? Well, like I said, they intend, their, their current trajectory is that they intend to, for instance, have someone at each of these task force meetings moving forward, taking notes and available for consultation if solicited. You know, they're very, uh, to their credit in my mind, they're very sensitive to not wanting to take over the process for anyone, but they want to make sure that the folks know that they're there and to the degree, again, assuming that the select board wants them, you know, they again, because they don't want to just start offering opinions and advice unless the select board says, yes, we want you there and we want you doing this, then they plan moving forward to be available for those discussions. So that would um, that would avoid some of that reduplication. One of the things that we did discuss today was, uh, and this is again tied to this whole issue of how the select board decides it wants to or not relate to the VCRD process in general, is it's also not just about the reduplication potentially of VCRD conversations, it's about reduplication of efforts potentially between the village or the town and those task forces as well. And so one of the things that was flagged is like working out a situation in which there's some through point of contact and communication so that everybody is sort of aware mutually, even amongst the task forces, because obviously some of the housing things and reconfiguring the downtown and recreation pieces, each of those workforces can kind of, excuse me, task forces could end up reduplicating efforts just amongst themselves because they kind of have some inter intersection and overlap. So I think it's all about trying to find a working process where we have a through line of communication, however, you know, the municipality decides that it wants to happen in addition to all those other pieces, but it all sort of flows through, say the select board saying, we want FEMA to do this. And then that entails FEMA's presence. And then that entails a discussion about how those task forces want FEMA to interact with them. You know, again, to me, if you have those folks in the room, it would be pretty smart in my view, you know, ask them <laughs> what they think about the various things that are being discussed. I believe Mark has had a question for a little while. Yeah. So, Randall, my concern is, is it, it seems to be the bulk of this is going to take place within the village limits. And how do you see 
the village government and the town, I mean, we adopt this. We say, let's move forward. They come back with um, some plan that's doable and the village goes, blah. How do, do, do we just overrule the village or do they, what's their role in that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because we have these two government bodies, the bulk of the bulk of your work is in, in their work is going to be in the village. I think that's why they want. Uh, I'm not trying to cut you off here, Randall, but the ask from FEMA is to have direction from both the town and the village, saying we would like a plan prepared. So the village is going to weigh in on on this ask. Also, uh, you did say that just earlier, did you not, Randall? That is that is FEMA's desire. Yes, it would be to have the town and the village both approve. It's the, to my understanding, it was not a make or break if only the town say wanted this. But obviously, as you just cited, Mark, it would create yeah a real complication to have their work kind of hemmed in by it only being things that take place fully within the, say, the boundaries of right. the town. Okay. Uh, Mark, Mark just asked if, if I wanted a motion. I, I don't think you need a motion tonight. I think this would be really, really good joint agenda topic if we could get team lined up to be there. Understanding joint meetings are a little bit difficult, uh, but if we could get both parties to make a motion in that meeting, saying we would like FEMA to prepare this plan. I think we would be at the starting point for them to do their work. And, and maybe the FEMA could zoom in. They might come back to us and we push the plan to you guys for some review. But if there's community input all the way, I think it'll be pretty it'll hemmed be in to John. Yeah. Anybody would be certainly foolish if they did not join this. Peter, are you interested? Yes. All right, Duncan. I am. I, I also want to say that I think that we did not make a formal motion originally when we talked about this, but the board was clearly in favor of proceeding down that path with the FEMA folks. And then this whole BCRD piece got in there. The only other thing I want to say with, with regard to that is I'm sensitive. I don't want... I think Paul sort of alluded to this. I, I don't want us and the task force and the FEMA folks to be working at cross purposes on any of these items. And I, I guess I say that just to be aware of it. And I don't know how we necessarily ensure that happens, but um, I think it's something we need to be cognizant of. Certainly. So Sorry. to add just to the fun and complication of it all, um, I mentioned that VCRD was also willing to visit and talk about the way that task forces that have resulted from this a similar uh, process in other communities have the way that those plays those uh, have played themselves out in other municipalities, right? Like have other municipalities made some of these task forces official town committees have some of them not, et cetera. VCRD is, willing to do that and it could also prove you know it could be productive to have it conjoined with the fema piece at a joint meeting but i don't obviously you know you all have enough of an agenda in that meeting as it is so i uh i guess it's a thing to contemplate do you want to hear from them or are you fine navigating that process uh, you know on your own do you not need to hear from vcrd not from fema but from vcrd i certainly think uh personally that the town needs to decide what our involvement with vcrd is and what, what our hopes are to get out of it i don't know if doing that in conjunction with fema with this fema report i, I don't think we could do that in a joint meeting okay and I will just say that VCRD, to, just to be clear, from a formal and technical standpoint in the way that they've engaged in this process in the past, normally this is the point at which they just kind of hand over the keys and say like, we've, we've elicited this stuff, we've set up the task forces and we've connected them with folks and now 
were kind of, there's been a little ambiguity because there's, they haven't quite done this in their traditional way. Um, but for the most part, they're kind of at the point at which normally they would just sort of set off and it would be up to the task forces and the municipalities to navigate their way forward. And so one of the th things that's interesting about, again, bringing FEMA back in is that FEMA could could be this sort of transition point in the, you know, in the course of their process, they can be this ongoing presence and potentially have, you know, if again, if asked by both the municipality and the workforces to provide some level of facilitation or ongoing, you know, expertise, they could do that. So your relationship to VCRD doesn't necessarily have to be, it's not so much about figuring out your relationship to VCRD as it is your relationship to the work, the task forces that have resulted from VCRD's work, because VCRD is sort of not, they have not committed to doing anything beyond this with the process. Although I think they will be present at the next meetings, but it's, it, they're not that clear about what their ongoing role will be just, just for, just to get that out there. It's a good point though. Ken. Thank you, Randall. Um, are we on to item number eight, which is the industrial park next steps um, in Tom's report? You kind of laid it out. I think this might just be kind of a running agenda item. Um, Randall's report actually had an update on the industrial park. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there, there is an uh, update. There is one minor update that has since been scheduled since you received that, which is I have a meeting with LCPC and Pat Ripley from LEDC to strategize about next steps that we're meeting this Friday to, to discuss that. We had originally, uh, and I haven't heard anything, we talked to Mumley and said, we need X, Y, and Z from you prior to this meeting, and uh, we have not received those things. So that may hinder our meeting if we don't get that material from uh, Mumley. It won't, it won't completely derail the discussion, but it would be nice to have the documents that we want to facilitate that discussion. But th there is that update that there's going to be a meeting on Friday. Okay. Anything else? We did get our partial notice to proceed, but that was in the report. Yeah. Yep. That is a good update to the public. Yep. Did you have anything? No. Just you're on the revolving loan fund now? Or? Revolving loan fund. We like to discuss that a little bit. Yeah, and Randall, jump in when you want. But Randall, Randall and I, Pat Ripley, and Victoria Helwig have been discussing the advisability of using the revolving loan fund and the complexities that it might add to the process. And I think it's fair to say, correct me if I'm wrong, Randall, that the general, certainly the general consensus of Pat Ripley and the LCPC folks would be that trying to tap into the revolving loan fund at this point in time would probably complicate matters more than the benefit of using the money. Um, and I think the general recommendation might be to, uh, I, I'm gonna put a pretty strong caveat on this, um, that the, the recommendation might be to try and reserve the, our, the revolving loan fund and perhaps target it towards businesses that might wanna locate there, but and a strong caveat I'm gonna put on that is there's a clawback provision in our closeout agreement, um, which basically says if we haven't committed 25% of the funds or something, um, that, that VCDP can request the funds back. So the risk that we potentially, the advantage of borrowing from the borrowing loan fund is we would meet those the clawback request. Well, and it would potentially reduce the tax burden on the project. If we borrowed at 0% interest, yeah. um, you know, from ourselves. It would lower the bond amount. Don't it would lower the bond, um, the amount that we would need to go for bond. The complicating, Randall can speak to this, but the complicating piece of that ultimately, I think, becomes um, the fact that we would need to get voter approval to uh, borrow. 
Um, and there are two NEPA, the environmental review processes that are slightly different, but basically cover the same types of issues. VCDP has their own uh, NEPA type review and Northern Borders Regional Commission has their own type of review. And that's the piece that I think the, you know, that Pat Ripley and others are concerned about might increase the complexity of moving the project along. Um, so the, the caveat that I wanted to make was if, if we don't use the revolving loan fund, I think we need to get some assurances from VCDP <coughs> that we can keep the fund and that we can target it towards um, you know other specific uh, businesses going in there. Um, and if, if they say all bets are off, then that could very well change how we look at whether we should borrow from the fund. Yeah, and Pat Ripley did say that how did he word it? He hasn't seen the clawback clause used excessively. Um, so that, I guess my read on that was um, maybe the BCDP would be amendable to an extension, I guess, until we get to my hope, until we got the industrial park running. That's that's my, my suggestion would be we work through Randall um, to reach out to VCD, VCD folks and try and get some assurances from them that the state, they're not going to There's so many. <laughs> um, do you need a motion for that? I, what's the board consensus here? I mean, the high level, we're talking about not using the revolving loan fund to reduce the bond. I don't think anybody wants to lose it. Do you need a motion for that or is consensus good enough? I, I think consensus is good enough if, if the board generally feels that we don't necessarily need to pull the plug immediately um, on borrowing from the result of the revolving loan fund, that we can proceed. We do have the bonding authority. Um, I also think, and maybe you can verify this Randall Friday, but I think we've got enough cash on hand, if you will, that we don't need to immediately apply to the bond bank for, for the note. Um, and if we can defer that a little bit longer, it saves us a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can find that out. My, what I recollect hearing from NBRC folks was that it wasn't going to be a requirement of them that we actually formally borrow. It was more a question of, did we have the authority to borrow? Yeah, and the concern was, you know, as you know, like the, the vote provided that authority, but the reason that the vote wasn't able to provide it immediately was because the the rescission period needed to pass. Uh, and, and and at which point then there's just a form, I believe, that I fill out that you know provides notation that the vote happened and the rescission period happened uh, passed. And that's just I'll just remind you, like if you do decide to go the RLF route and you do decide, that uh, you know you're going to have to have another vote, and so that that alone just introduces you know a month, at least a month, a minimum of a month kind of delay and everything uh, if you go the RLF route. But the concern I think mostly was I don't think it was so much about the the environmental review piece because I think those are fairly coordinated. I think it's the the part that that is the number of people is just in our previous discussion in a way embodies right. The more entities you involve, the more folks can have questions within all of those various entities. And then getting answers to those questions that satisfy those various entities can ju just bog everything down. So if you need to know, is this vendor acceptable? And you can't just go to like one person and ask that one person if it's acceptable. You've got to like email them, wait for them. They get you questions. Then you got to email the other entity and make sure that they, they say it's acceptable. You know, that's the piece where it just can create this like bogging down scenario that I think Pat was sort of pointing to. It's just, if you have a more streamlined decision-making structure, <laughs> you you get rid of a lot of those lags, just response time lags and follow-up question lags and all those sorts of things. I'm kind of in the Evan camp. I, 
I, I don't sense the urgency that we're they're going to claw this money back. But you know, we just asked Randall and Duncan to verify that. I think we're yeah, gonna... yeah. If they, if yeah, uh, the chances are, Mark, I think that they probably won't. But the clawback provision I understand is in that. there. And they are could we exercise bumping it up right now. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. They could. It's been hanging out there I a think, long yeah, time. I think we bumped up against it years ago. Yeah. And they want. They would otherwise want. What amount from the town? What percent? DCDP could get back the revolving loan fund full amount. Full amount. So that's is that a quarter million? So yeah, it's a little more than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, close to three hundred thousand. Yeah, three hundred thousand. And some of it has been loaned out, and I, I don't know whether they yeah. could ask for that back or not. Duncan could explain it much better, but to get Sterling Market in um, this program of government, bacon was doled out to entities to give at low interest rate loans for businesses to mm -hmm. create job promotion. Is that the, the thirty thousand foot view of the revolving loan fund? I think. Are you asking for a thirty thousand foot view? That's a hundred thousand foot. Can we give a two hundred thousand foot view? <laughs> the two hundred thousand foot view would was that the the town applied for and received a grant through hazard mitigation, uh, which went through Vermont Community Development Program (VCDP). Um, that loan was paid back and the town received 50% of the total granted amount to use as a revolving loan. Okay. And that sum of money is what we're talking about. Uh, that's that. the piece they can claw. Yeah, because okay. they want us to have been loaning it out, which mm -hmm. we have. The plan to use it for future businesses and for potential contingencies. Pretty, I mean, just letting them know that there's a plan in place is has to be pretty appealing to them. Uh, and I think I think it would be a no-brainer for them, honestly, if we if we particularly said, you know, we're gonna try and target, we're gonna try and use the money to loan to businesses that want to locate in that industrial product. Yeah. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. just getting that right. Nice. Just yep. to, sp to speak to the revolving loan fund from the non-300,000 foot or 200,000 foot view, I just for the you know for the interested public, uh, the two hundred thousand foot view, right? We have money to mobilize to help businesses. Great. Unfortunately, none of our businesses exist at the two hundred foot, <laughs> two hundred thousand foot level, right? If you're actually a business on the ground, accessing the money is onerous. It has a bunch of sort of regulatory strings attached to it. So it's not particularly easy money to mobilize, except for large entities that have the administrative staff to manage the kind of uh, complexity involved with it. That's that's the unfortunate piece is that it's not as simple as just saying like, hey, do you need this money to do X with your business? And here you go. It's OK, if you take this money here are all the, you know, here's the bid requirements, here's the labor requirements, here's the drug free workplace requirement, here's all of these sort of federal requirements that you then sign on and have to manage. And if you're a big entity, you're going to have expertise, legal expertise and staffing to manage that. If you're a small little business trying to get started, you may not have the time or resources to do it. So. Thank you, Randall. I think we're good with it all in one time. Uh, next item is the Planning Commission and Reimagine Johnson. Wholeheartedly, Paul, don't have an answer. <clears throat> huh? Yeah, this is kind of on there because you were here yeah. uh, at the meeting already, and we had talked a couple of times, and you're kind of wondering what the town wants the Planning Commission's role to be. Um, Salted. Huh? We've been salting. We have planning commission members in most of them. Yeah, but where's the pepper? <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> yeah, I would suggest this might be on every Sunday. Let's just kind of let this. Yeah, you had kind of had a recommendation in your report already, so I think we're covered that topic. Plus, 
if the village so chooses to go for a FEMA long, long term flood. So. Certainly. Does the select board have anything else? I do think we need to talk about this a couple more times, maybe with the select board's role. But In terms of the reimagined piece? Yeah, and the, the task forces. Um, I had an invitation from a task force. I did not, I think you were on it. I don't know how many other select board members were on it. Um, just so you know, we can't three select board members can't attend the task force meeting. Uh, Unless we want it as a public without it being a warm select board meeting. So there's just some hurdles <clears throat> there that we just gotta figure out all work together. Yeah, the only other comment I, I would reiterate is I I the way the process ended up to me sounds a lot more like a traditional BCRD community visit process where you identify these tasks. Um, and the piece that I, that I don't know the answer to is how do we coordinate the work of the task force with either the planning commission or the select board. Again, I don't want to work at cross purposes. And, and a classic example of that is we currently have a swift current grant application that we are that we have submitted and are working through for the grocery store. And I, you know, I guess I am a little concerned that there might be an impetus on the part of some of the committee members to look for alternatives to that, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe maybe it's a good thing. Um, but this board has committed to an application for a specific purpose to redevelop that site. Mm -hmm. And if the task force works in a way that contradicts that, that's going to be a problem for me. Um, so I don't, I don't know how we address that concern. Issue. So, uh, Duncan, I'll address that to some degree. Uh, again, I'm sorry, everyone. I, you're probably sick of hearing me talk. But um, Pomerleau had someone at the last VCRD meeting. Drew, Drew from Pomerleau's team was there. So oh, that, doesn't, that doesn't exclude the possibility that the task force could still go in whatever direction that might be across purposes. But they, the, the folks in that room heard directly from Pomerleau Real Estate, I think, a lot of information that was probably helpful to understand, like, you know, they specifically addressed the notion of relocating the grocery store and why, from their perspective, that wasn't economically feasible, et cetera. And the fact that there was this grant out there and that that was the, what they were pursuing was also discussed at that, that meeting. So at least in that specific instance, some of that information was directly provided to the task force by, you know, straight from Pomerleau Real Estate, which I thought was great and very helpful to have them in the room, you know, and being, being able to kind of articulate, here's why we went this direction or whatnot. Yeah, that's great. It doesn't necessarily mean that the task force is going to head in that same direction. Right. But, no guarantee. Whether you want to print the grants, you're going to have to like you guys for sponsors or support or whatever. They're looking for a grant, but they might. You know, they might want I think there's a task force that's looking for potentially another town employee already. I'm just reading well, that. Well, the thing the road gate shaker for the downtown one, we didn't even know about that. I didn't know about it. So, okay. yeah, we're going to have to walk. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I share your concerns at working in duplication, um, but also at working at odds. I think the whole board probably does to some extent, but we need to probably have a larger discussion about the select board and not so much planning commission because you guys have kind of found a path to meet right now. Well, it may, it may work itself out as the task force meet and begin to discuss what their thoughts are and it may just turn into an effort. It's definitely and possible. It's, it's encouraging that Pomerol who was at that meeting. Yeah. That, that to me is encouraging. Yep. On to the next one, which is probably going to be really fun because there's a bunch of different stuff in the packet for it. 
but this is the town plan changes and final hearing. I believe the final hearing, did you get confirmation that it was worn for the 30th, Tom? That was only worn on the 24th. So the the adoption. Not worn for the 30th. Ah. Or three on language. Yeah, it's a joint. Okay. Thing. So what um, you have in your packet, you have to over The first version is the original that the language is put together. doesn't include any of language. Okay. So you can skip those pages clearly. <clears throat> it was then presented to the village trustees for their public hearing. They added some to the language. Came back to the planning session. We edited it. Went back to those that they didn't like the edits. Went back to essentially the original plus an added paragraph. Duncan's weighed in on some of the language, and so I'll leave it there and try it if you want. And what's on the last page is your email. That's the most okay. recent. Uh, all your emails that you made the packet is included in there tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do. So essentially, they added a paragraph entitled ATD Trail Network. Um, it's this yellow highlighted. Yeah, yeah. highlighted. So I have not emailed about this. <laughs> uh, I do think that facts are important, uh, being able to back stuff up. So some of this language I don't agree with. Um, I think you hit that in your email, Duncan. But yeah. Where was yours? Uh, what did I say? Um, I, I just was a little concerned about the language. Oh, you asked if it was correct. They asked, yeah, but basically you, if it was correct. Yeah, but you didn't. If you have my email, if you go back below that, it's very difficult. Yeah, I think I my specific thought or proposal was wording to the effect of Bassett Trails in Johnson are primarily based on access to unpaved sections of class three and class four roads as per the town ordinances. These roads are maintained by the town of Johnson. Their language was 23 miles of trail maintained by, by the ATB club. And I just, I don't think that's accurate. They, if it is, they can provide factual data to back it up really quick, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I they do. About that and she said she got that number from Vassar directly, but she didn't know what it was. Yeah. Well, I guess it includes the roads. Well, yeah. Trail, but, uh, Mass's trail network is on Polaris website, the interactive map, and there seems to be a disconnect between our ordinance and what they offer on the trail network online, which I think some what leads to some of the APD issues that we're very concerned about. I don't know where this Polaris website gets that data from, or how we even interject to say, hey, wait. Can't drive well, they're showing currently showing plot probably as part of that trail network, which is the class two highway. All right, right. tell us less than the open line road. Yeah. And I think we well, all visit. We had a short meeting, I was showing with the library, um, for the intersection of plot road. And during that time, we saw four APVs drive right by. So I think politely, but still legally, it needs to be some. Communication there as far as what's real and what's not, and how to change that. Grass trails in Johnson are primarily based on access to on paved sections of class three and blah blah blah. The public town ordinance, these roads are. Did, did you say class three and four, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's factual. I think Duncan's language is the best. I do too. Is. I think it's just to the point and it's facts. We have a town ordinance. I believe the primary amount of their trail network in Johnson is. Has the village, have the village trustees seen your language, Duncan? Not that I know. That's a discussion once we agree on language. Okay. Is the board comfortable with Duncan's proposed language? I am. That would be. Would you take the whole paragraph out of 92? Sorry, I'm just trying to 
I would just supplant the sentence that says Bassett Trails and Johnson area comprise 23.37 miles and replace it with Bassett Trails and Johnson are primarily based on access to class three unpaved sections of class three and class four roads as per the ordinance. So you just take that second sentence out. Take this, remove the second replace sentence the and replace it with. Did you also um, remove the all terrain vehicles are essential are an essential part of Johnson's recreation? I did, and I don't know if you're going to get to that ever or not. But that was the, that was the second proposed change that I've done. I was getting to it. Feels like if you're going to use that language, I mean, you sh that's like a yeah. subjective false language would be supported follow up or false. That last page has the survey results. You know, it's like, how do you support an opinion, right? Yeah, I would, I personally would be fine with it just saying, are a part of, it. that's subjective. An essential part, you could provide factual data for quite easily, right? A part of the planning commission recommended. A part of it, so we just verify that. So they added the, the essential part? In there originally, we took it out as a good just say So there's really no factual basis for so, all right. right. That's the hard thing. They don't have data to back it up. It becomes subjective. And... What other recreation is essential? Yeah, so that would be my second recommendation. The sentence yeah. would be simply all terrain vehicles are a part of Johnson's recreation company rather than an essential part. I don't think there's any dispute that they're part of the recreation company. Right. Well, any changes that we make to put a wrench in the works? Well, so, so here we go. The board's all comfortable with that wording. Um, and are we are we comfortable with the local business wording? We change that, we change it back, I think it's fine. I think that's kind of subjective either way, but you know a company could make money. Providing canoes for the paddler trail too. So yeah, it seems sort of the details of it. Yes. So if the board is comfortable with that wording, <clears throat> and it sounds like we're gonna go get rejected at the joint meeting. Um, I guess my question is this might be a broad question. Everybody seated. <laughs> <laughs> Does it need to be a joint municipal plan? It was a rhetorical question, but I believe Charlie I told me no. 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 Uh, uh, no. Question no. Is you need a plan. Thank you. to find the town and good plan considerations go. Um, so it could be separate again. I'm not trying to make more work for the planning commission, but it was already made clear earlier. A municipal planning grant would be a great application for a comprehensive capital plan, which I think would do a lot of framework for future select boards. I'll be dead by then. <laughs> uh, but we the can't get a municipal it. planning grant because we don't have a plan. Yeah. plan. And I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but a lot of our wording you said was already rejected by the village. So I was trying to find a happy ground where we're providing factual basis but we have a town plan and we don't push this down the road. Yeah, so just to be clear, the mileage thing was not in the original one that we, we were spent in their words um, that was added in their last iteration. We did take out the word essential, they put it back in. Um, and then the other thing that I was going to further complicate it with is just this acknowledgement of the debate about the extent of ATV use that you guys can either agree with or not. I was hoping to not complicate it. <clears throat> <laughs> but it seems like the plan ought to reflect reality. And all it says is that there's a big gap as to the extent of. I mean, if if you want that wording, I guess I, I could personally get behind it, but we got to provide the data, right? That was a. Well, we have data. It was a survey filled out by 10%. The only reason I really put that in there is because one of the things they put in is uh, the four sentences in their paragraph that's highlighted. 
is an interest exists to find a solution that would provide connectivity between the current trail network and the downtown <coughs> services. Okay, true statement. Which is by the yeah. There's also an interest by assuming the portion of the to not have that happen. So I think we just want to acknowledge the debate. Is that can't solve it, but is it are there any ramifications to it? If everybody agrees in the entire town plan, except for this one paragraph, and say there were a town plan and a village plan that had very just a separate paragraph right there, what are the ramifications of two plans separated by one paragraph? Just for the sake of being a town plan. Yes. Well, I think that the issue is a little, it's not unfortunately as simple as the town adopting one and the village adopting the other. The town and village a number of years ago, the respective trustees and select board, I believe, voted to create a joint planning commission. Um, so right now, what we actually have, you guys, are the joint planning commission for the town and the village. Yeah. Part of the reason that a joint planning commission was convened was the inability of the village to actually find members to serve on the village planning commission. Uh, so, you know, to some degree, it was a practical matter to, you know, combine it to it. Um, and then, of course, the other was um, that it kind of so a sense to look at planning in a holistic, comprehensive fashion and, and have one plan for both. Entities. So it's, I, I think that we would have to undo the action of having a joint planning commission. You don't think a joint planning commission could prepare separate plans? Is that what you're saying? If you read the statutory language regarding a joint planning commission, the, the intent of that whole thing is to create one municipal plan for the Two municipalities. But it does the board have the authority to adopt a plan separate from the, you know, like say the, the planning commission has really no authority other than to make recommendations. And so, what if the board doesn't accept the recommendation and does something different? Well, they could. I think the problem here is the planning commission has made a recommendation, which was rejected by half of the half of the joint. Uh, entities. Um, so I don't, I don't know specifically to answer your question or yours either. It, it's possible that the planning commission could recommend to us the language that we're talking about adopting and we could, uh, we could adopt it and the village might not. I don't know what the ramifications of that are. The village also can't hire the grants. It's like, sorry, it's in there, but it's in there. It's not probably that good as you guys, but I think they want it's in there. It's just a plan approved in the template as well. I'm not even sure they're eligible for municipal planning. Well, they, I'm not sure whether they are. They do have a seat on the Monroe County Planning Commission, so they're recognized as a separate legal entity. I guess we're in a little bit of a sticky wicket. We are. Um, I mean, I, so I'm not incredibly opposed to the wording that was put forth. Like I said, I just want it to be fact-based instead of feeling-based. And I feel like what we came up to for wording was somewhere in the middle. are just facts. But all right. Am I being told that we have to accept the exact same verbiage? Could, do we give somebody the, the homework to see if we can just accept our own plan? That way we could be eligible for municipal planning grants again. Is, is there a possibility next, next week at the joint meeting of having a conversation about the wording, the different view of the wording yeah. uh, in the same room with each other and you know see if there's a perhaps a recognition of 
what we're trying to do? Yeah, so I didn't communicate it well. I think next week, take the verbiage that we're happy with. I was already at them saying no, based on <laughs> uh, some pushback that the planning joint planning commission has received on verbiage that it sounds like we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but I could be presuming incorrectly and they might say yes. I just, trying I just think, and if that were to occur, uh, then we can go ahead. If they, were, if they were happy with our language, are we ready to post our final hearing and sign it? Yeah, I think the, the question that I would have is our, you know, Paul has suggested some language with regard to the sentence in the section here that refers to uh, and interest exists. And I, I think in and of itself, that's true. There's certainly a contingent of people that would like to see access to the village. There's also a contingent of people who don't agree with that um, concept. So how do we get, I think if we incorporate the language as you've submitted it whole uh, in, in, in its entirety, we probably aren't going to get to a happy place. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's either going to be their way or the highway. It could be. I mean, they, they, they might not find even the first two changes that we want to insert as acceptable. I guess it's an interesting I, meeting to discuss that. Right. I guess I was just wondering sure. if there was some, if we could massage your language a little bit to maybe it could be something as simple as. You know, there's a debate over whether or not it, you know we ATV should be able to take out the uh, survey stats. Yeah, with the only problem that that's the only stat for part. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's problematic. <laughs> Your language, Duncan, was a, a good uh, compromise, I think. If sacrificing this paragraph we get ready to agree, I think we could agree to sacrifice the paragraph. I think the word that's going to be the hang up is the word essential. Yeah. Is that really? But that seems so sort of silly. If it is essential, it's very easy for them to provide some facts. So maybe uh, we could just ask them to come with the facts. And why is nothing else? Um, referred to as essential. Yeah, yeah. You know, I. Yeah. You're asking the tough questions now, Peter. Yeah. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to mention <laughs> the dictionary definition of essential. Absolutely necessary. Is it absolutely necessary for the viability of this community for certain things to happen, or is it extremely important? Okay. It's pretty. Low on the totem pole, probably. So it's not essential. I would hope to think that in a joint meeting, you could come up with a acceptable synonym. Strike it. We can try. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Strike it. What's that? That's a part. Yeah, that's what it is. Can we? Song. Can we ask Tom to send a memo to the trustees indicating that we would like to see the changes that I think we all agree on um, and suggest that that be a discussion on our next at the joint meeting? Our joint meeting agenda topics are coming up, but it's one of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. Is the board comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm comfortable. Is that with something it. you can do, Tom? Just PJ and uh, And they can circulate. Send it to yeah, they can circulate it to their other. And then copy the board chair. Yeah. Um, just so we're clear, 100% clear for Tom, we're requesting the word essential be struck. The second sentence being changed to. Massa, Trails, and Johnson are preliminary based on access to on page sections of class three and class four roads as per town ordinance. These roads are maintained by the town of Johnson. 
Those are the only two changes we're asking for, correct? We're not talking about the additional paragraph that Paul has proposed. I want to be 100% clear. I would like Tom to reach out. I don't want there to be questions on what he's reaching out about. Are we all in conjunction there? Yep. Nobody's. Well, the only thing that Sorry, I, that bothers me about you're you're in agreement. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, the the only thing the the sentence where it says um, where is it? It's on this page. Um, currently, there is no access to trails for ATV users into the village center, and interests exist to find a solution that would provide connectivity between current trail network and downtown amenities and services. In, in and of itself, that's a true statement. But it's only half of the statement. Uh -huh. I guess it depends on where you sit, right? If they, um, they being the ATV club, were able to work with enough landowners to connect sections of road between Main Street and up there, Nobody would even have a say. ATVs have a right away on those that, teeth. That's a really good Anyways, point. If the argument is about use of roads, not access to the Well, road. I think that's what we're tying it to, and I'm just trying to see it from both sides here. No, I don't think that's necessarily true, though. I mean, what you said, but the concern that we cover it, as I understand it, is that if we have this connectivity, if you get to the other side of town, you get to downtown, it logically means that pretty substantial increase in ATC ridership, which a lot of people on back roads aren't in favor of. Potentially, yeah. But playing devil's advocate here against myself earlier or for myself tomorrow, who knows? Um, if a trail is put through somewhere over here and they built the bridge over the Long River, went through the stable, blah, 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 put a trail on the main street, we have no say over main street. And then they put a trail up and crossed the unpaid section of Gould Hill and went up and crossed Plot Road perpendicularly and got up to the unpaved section of Clay Hill. We would have no say. It would be private landowners. I guess and just I hear the concern. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate to not add the extra paragraph which adds oil to water. Gas to the plane. Gas to the plane. Yeah. Can you hang yeah. on one second? Just leave well enough alone, Tom. Yes, Peter. Um, yeah, it was there. Let me see if I can get it back. Can I go to Charlie first? <laughs> go ahead. Charlie. Yeah. So, I will say we are going to do cross plot road. That's a class two road. No. No, there's already something in state statute that says if you're crossing a highway perpendicular or as close to perpendicular as possible, Bobby agrees with me, and nobody's going to disagree with her. So, <laughs> <we're good. laughs> I do. I do. Uh, one of one of the things that, that is in here is it says find a solution, and I guess inherent in the concept of finding a solution is agreement by all parties. Right. So, right. so maybe that, maybe that is enough. Maybe that works. To say that an interest exists is stating only half of the equation, but it also is not saying we are going to do this. That would involve a change in the ordinance. If we say an interest exists. From some people, I think they do it, but we did write the ATV club. I mean, I I've heard from individual yeah. citizens that have interests that have nothing to do with ATV club other than their dues. But I think it's accurate because there's not been an interest that says they want to remove ATVs altogether, and the only interest is to change the current ordinance to add. That's all in my mind, anyways. And so it seems pretty accurate. But although it doesn't say the other half of the equation, it does show the most recent interest. How can we show the other half of the equation? Could we in add, less words, Paul? Could right. we add just a percent? Could I we, don't think you need to touch that at all because you're just gonna muddy the waters more with the village. Can we add two words to the to the language that's in there? 
and haven't we an interest exists to find a mutually agreeable solution? A mutually agreeable. Don't touch it. We might have a chance of what we've done. But you keep going and you're not going to get anything. Or words, I think. <laughs> Leave it alone. Just go back with what we've already done and move on. What do you think about Duncan's recommendation? I'm I'm fine with this recommendation. What do you I think, would Peter? go further even, but I'm gonna... yes, we know that. Which what recommendation? Duncan's recommendation of two words. I'm I'm good with that. Oh, I guess you all voted. <laughs> You're not two words. Is it clear what mutually refers to? Like I, I don't have the thing in front of me, but it kind of sounds like no, it's not. <laughs> oh, I, it's, it's a little bit of ambiguity. Uh, <laughs> are we are we talking about mutually agreeable? An interest Duncan's pro proposing the third sentence, fourth sentence being changed from an interest exists to find a solution. That's the way it's currently written to an interest exists to find a mutually agreeable solution. I feel like you shouldn't use the word mutually unless it's clear what the two sides are that are going to mutually agree. Yeah. You think I, we can get Duncan to back out of this on recommendation? <laughs> I didn't make a motion. No, I no, made a suggestion. no, we five. Three board members are four. And I, I can live with that sentence the way it is. There, there Acknowledging <laughs> that it's half of the story, but if that's in, if that is important, that sentence, and we could make some progress on the other two pieces that I think are important, um, I I can live with that sentence. Everybody needs a win, and if you start muddying the waters, you. Need more than we already done, we're not going to walk away with anything. So let's leave the rest of it all. Maybe eight years from now, I'll oh, like a negotiating strategy. Peter's right? Throw it in there and offer to take two words out to accept <laughs> the other two changes. <laughs> we're in a public um, meeting. So. Yeah. You're agreed to get you to leave that sentence as is if take the other wording and turn it into you don't know how they think. <laughs> I don't know that. So I, I was a trustee for eight years. So I know how that So he knows how, 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 how do you think, Mike? I'm not going to give away the time. <laughs> <laughs> how much? <laughs> okay. All right. So if we're good with wording, <laughs> who needs to find out if we can accept their own plan? Or are we just going to go to the joint meeting? You're talking then, about Duncan's two words or just his original one? We're talking about the one. whole kit and caboodle. We asked Tom to get in touch with Eric, the chair, and the vice chair on exact wording. <coughs> Do we have that exact wording? Are you clear on that exact wording? Strike right, central change to a part. Mutual, mutually agreeable solution. Those are the three changes. I think you need to strike that. That's what the board wants. If we're I all thought Peter was coming around. <laughs> I thought Peter came around and got the other three. And so it'll be three the other way. Leave that sentence alone and make the other two changes. Good. So that two changes, three changes. We'll stick with two. <laughs> two it is. Let's go. All right. So just the two changes, Tom. You're good. I, lied. I just lied to you. If we're good with wording, I would like to move on to my next question, but if we want to continue doing wording, that's fine. Nope. Oh, let's move on. Okay. My question is, if we are just told no, we're not going to change it. Where do we go from there? The town does it on its own. So do we need some data research for logistics of that? Would, which would entail researching the vote that was taken to do a joint? I mean, that's what you said, Duncan. 
Yeah, I, I don't think it was a vote of the of the voters. I think the planning committee. I mean, I think the select board and the trustees voted to combine to to, combine. to create a joint planning commission. Okay. And there, therefore, thereafter, we've had a joint plan as well. I mean, well, I think you should research it because I'm in favor of our having our own plan. And the village can have their plan. I have a note to reach out to the LCP and put a quick question. Charlie. So in terms of the planning commission working for the town and the village, the planning commission developed a form based code. And the trustees did not buy into it and was adopted by the town, even though it only covers part of the village. So I don't see that the trustee select board creating a plan, the joint planning commission is relevant to whether we have one plan or two plans. I didn't hear I didn't hear part the planning part commission part. has done things for the town then that certainly affect the village. The village didn't buy into it. Only the town approved form based code. So I think that's not a, a, a valid argument against having the planning commission run two different plans. So you're suggesting that two separate plans would be fine? Yes. Okay. I would, I would be supportive of Tom just verifying that with the LCT if the board's okay with that. Mm -hmm. I know you said you already had a no. I, I think we're good on this for the joint meeting. Thank the planning commission very much for all their hard work. And let's, sorry about wordsmith. Let's talk about one base code. Maybe. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's the next item on the agenda. Meeting adjourned. We're done. Yeah. yeah. But maybe depending on how the joint meeting goes, maybe for our next meeting we could add to the agenda of the Middle East. Or yeah. <laughs> and, and what? The Middle East. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can solve all the problems. Right. Solve the problems. Sure. Right. December's gun rights month. Sure. <laughs> right. Isn't, wouldn't uh, that be November? <laughs> that would be no deal. Our next item is diet zoning. <laughs> 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 We're going to get 100 people this <laughs> I said the Z word. Be recorded. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, hey, you got to have a little bit of sense of humor. So <laughs> if the board recalls, Peter, I don't know if you were on the board at the time. I don't believe you were. Um, but um, we had asked the Planning Commission to make some amendments to the form based code for flood mitigation efforts um, and they had declined and I, more recently we asked them again to reconsider um, and they have decided to decline again uh, paul could speak to the reasoning better than me one of them was uh, the amount of flood storage it would take up one of them was uh, rebuilding in the same spot expecting a different outcome is crazy uh, but the board needs to decide what we want to do. I do believe that we have authority to make an amendment to the plan. Correct. If we so choose. Uh, I believe so. One of, one of the things that I think might be worth talking with VLCT about also would be what that exact process would look like. Um, I believe not 100% sure that the form based code was adopted under the provisions of Chapter 117, adopting a type of zoning regulation, as opposed to a Chapter 57, adopting an ordinance. So, if that is correct, my belief is that this board can propose a change. They have to provide copies of the change to the planning commission we can review and comment um, and we have to have at least one public hearing maybe two maybe sure we know okay. uh, how many public hearings does the select board have to have one or two I don't know okay. um, and then there would be a 
for after the public hearing, the, the select board would be choose to adopt or not adopt. But then, the, in terms of process, there would be a petition on where. No, I don't think know. there would be. I, I don't think there would be if you're adopting according to the chapter one seventeen provisions. There, I don't think there is any appeal period. If you're adopting as an ordinance, the board adopts the ordinance and then there's a 45 day period. Well, this code was adopted by Australian Ballot, correct? No, it was not. Yes, it was. No, it was not. It was just, a, it was just like, a, a, like a motivational vote. To the board it, it, to it, it was an advisory vote at a town meeting. I think that's, that's the key is advisory. Yes. No. Okay. But it was challenged. It was challenged. It was a petition. It was voted on by Australian ballot during the primary in August of that year. So it was voted on by the voters. It was adopted by the voters. Oh, yeah. Town meeting minutes don't reflect that. No, they don't. Of course, they wouldn't. Oh, because it happens after prior. the town meeting. Yeah. No, it, was well, it doesn't. It just means the process might be slightly different. The BLCT needs to know that. Well, what, and what's happened in between times is that, that the legislature changed the statute, and it used to be that that was adopted by Australian ballot. You know, zoning regulations were adopted by, but now it's adopted by the select board. So I guess the bottom line is we should find out for sure exactly what the process is. Can you is. follow up? with Rosemary on the petition and the Australian ballot poll. Charlie? I can probably send you all a lot of time. In that and email us. <laughs> <laughs> the first, I talked to the people from Carmelow at the Meg Johnson group once again meeting. <laughs> they are planning on conforming to form based code by doing the reinforcing inside the building. So as far as Pomelo is concerned, they can live with form based code the way it is. Item two, if you read form based code, the development review review the development review board has a very broad authority to change provisions of you bring them a plan and they can approve it basically. Can can Yes. Not that they will. Correct. And I acknowledge that the email conversation with you. Um, yeah, definitely. I've gone back to what I was quite good and talked to the OCP team and Rod Jensky. Rod and Jensky. And pretty much he likes across the board is if you want this to happen, you probably do want to omit phone based code because otherwise you're setting yourself up for a lawsuit. Because the ERB does have a little attitude. But it's completely unspecified land. Right. And so they do one project and not another, yada, 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 you know, potentially setting yourself up for legal mess. Yeah, so I, I think you could do, we, I, I guess what we ultimately need to decide is whether this board has an appetite to amend the form based code. I think it could be relatively simple. I think it could be a clause that is titled um, something like flood mitigation measures. Um, and then something almost as simple as uh, the DRB is empowered to review and approve designs based on flood mitigation design requirements from the building envelope standards. Um, I would suggest that we have words to the effect of, you know, the deviation from form based code shall be the minimum required or the minimum yeah. necessary. You know, something like that. So I don't think it's a big lift. I personally believe it should be done. Um, and if the planning commission is, you know, isn't interested in doing it, I believe we should. Uh, but that's that entail, a, will that entail a town vote? What's that? Will we need to go to the public for a vote on it? Well, that's what I think we should ask Tom to do. But I think the fact that it may or may not have been adopted, or if it was adopted by Australian Bell, at this point in time, I don't think that it matters. Because amendments of to an ordinance would now fall under the current statutory regime, in yeah. my opinion, um, and would not require an Australian ballot vote. It would require public hearings. Um, it would require submitting changes to the planning commission for their review and a comment. 
Um, and then after that, this board would adopt it. So are you saying that one of our objections was historically board storage? So if they put a wall around the front park, seven feet high, whatever that is, 20 down the square feet, or whatever it is. I saw a recent one that said it was 16,000, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, but if the wall is inside the store, is your concern the same? Well, outside or inside. I mean, <laughs> either way, if you're you're displacing 140,000 cubic feet of water, it's got to go somewhere. If you flood one more home in the trailer park, you serve the public good. There's one more family that's in the FEMA mess. You know, you don't get that money for anything wrong. Have you done a study on that to see how much it actually brings the whole level of the water up through the whole area? Well, yeah. it's minuscule. Well, it would be minuscule, but if it's an inch from your floorboards, an inch is an inch. I understand, but you're, you're putting a wrench in the works to bringing a store into this community. And I think that the majority of the people in this community want that store back. No, everybody counts, and most people would not. Okay. So, task would not mean that. No, I'm sorry. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. said it shouldn't be there. Remember, they hold it in the park? Wait, hang on. We got to get back to Duncan's question here, Paul. I, I hear you on flood storage, um, and I do believe I addressed it. A concern and a possible solution at the last meeting when we asked you. And I know it might be a little bit tit for tat, but um, hurt on the flood storage. Okay, thank you. I will say what Amy just said is true. At the um, Reimagine Johnson, one of the opening sessions there, one of the many questions they asked was, should the market be built in the same location? And by far, the vast majority of votes were no. How many people now, voted? Realize, mm -hmm. How many people voted on that? 50, 60, 70, 80, 100? 100. 100. These 2,000 people here are more. Right. I bet you'd find out the vast majority of people in this community did, did not go to that meeting number one and would like the store back in this community yeah. and that's, all of the surrounding community too. Um, well, that's where I'm going. I think the, if in fact it's true that Sonoma Market in its current location is our only option, mm -hmm. then I think a lot of people probably change the vote. It depends on how the question was asked, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I it was in the context of talking about flood resiliency. Right. And I think it appeared to the vast majority of people that in terms of flood resiliency, it didn't make sense. You know, it, well, I think we'd all agree. Yeah, yeah. Location, but but that was the that was the if was if if there were other options. You know, would you prefer going back to the same site or looking for a new site? Um, I think that there was a context to the question. Um, There's also a context to the question of if that site could be mitigated so that it didn't flood, would you approve going back to that site? That there, so the, the question of should it be there or not, at first blush, would you put it there today? Probably not, but it's there. And it's owned by a private business owner who may be willing to put a significant investment into that building to return it to a viable store. To me, that's the greater question. Charlie? So you can, select board can write whatever they want, but the planning commission has to conform to the town plan, which we don't have. It's perfect. So, <laughs> Thanks yeah. for that question. Though. Yeah, great segue. All right. I mean, I'm going to go around the room. I'm going to start with you. Duncan asked if we have the, the palette to change it. Do you? Form based code or diet zoning? Diet zoning. <laughs> and the question really would be do we want to develop a specific standard that would allow the DRB to? to Permit 
changes to the building envelope based on flood mitigation design. Uh, I guess I guess what I have to say um, I I have an appetite for learning more. Mark, I I am um, I think I support this, but we're going to learn more on, along the way. <laughs> That's all there is to it. There's no way that it's not going to be. More. I'm so supportive of having a grocery store for the community. I change it today if we're good. I think it's really important to point out it's not just the grocery store. I know store. it's not the grocery store, but that's what everybody wants I to know. talk about. I know. So. But it would apply to any building. It would. Right. Yeah. yeah. I agree with Doug. Yeah. I guess we got three members that are supportive. Four that are supportive, one that wants. Yeah. <laughs> so, that being the case, can you talk to the Rosemary about all of that and get the LCTs. So I think I circulated an email today that has some proposed language. Um, Ron Legensky was also perhaps gonna weigh in with some specific did standards. Did yeah, did yeah this was the most recent. This morning there was actually some suggested action items. That, this is the suggestion from Seth. If you keep going, Duncan is on the If you keep going, mine is on. It's, it's the whole continued conversation. This is the legal language. Supporting. Page 20. It's on page two of this. Top of it, yep. Where it begins, maybe I'm underthinking this, but I think an amendment might be as simple as including a section title flood design, flood design mitigation. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, if, if the board is willing to entertain that basic concept, I think we can flush that out with specific language. Mm -hmm. Again, Ron Rajensky might have some, LCPC might have some, you know, specific recommendations, but that's the, the basics. We need to move I'll start forward. on this side. Are you, are you comfortable yes. with the basics? Yeah, we are. I am as well. Mm -hmm. You guys are yes. good. Perfect. I think we can flesh out those ideas with that basic concept. Anything further? <clears throat> I think there's Gosh. plenty of people here for the next conversation. The bridge? Uh, it's really riveting stuff here. Did uh, I stop by the office today and pick up my, my uh, three eighths of an inch copy of the scoping study? Did anybody else look at it? <laughs> you did. Just every word. Did you? It's a full catalog. <laughs> <laughs> you printed that in color. Oh my goodness. Um, is that is that on, that cost 40, on the town website yet? So yeah. town people can look at it. Uh, uh, 40, 40, this 40, is 40, a preliminary 40, strategy. 40, 40, 40, 40, the first one what comes out tonight will be another. Might have been about eighty thousand. And that'll go on the website. So the conversation tonight uh, for the public, if anybody's interested, is just about anything that the select board would like to have in a scoping study, not necessarily what would be done. It would just be in a scoping study so a future board could use that scoping study to get grant funding and anything that's missed in the scoping study cannot be you can't seek grants using the scoping study for it does the board have anything they'd like added to the scoping study this this would be the additional scoping study would be for the purposes of grants to repair, uh, repair, replace, change, put it, put it on a turntable with a disco ball. <laughs> yeah, one, one of these the, options could be the basis the goal, for a grant application. The goal yeah. would, my goal would be repair it. I can't speak for the full board. We need um, to repair it. But does the board want to add anything to the scoping study for a future board to maybe? We spent so much money on studies on this bridge that we could have fixed it by now. And, and to Mike's point, the first scoping study that was done did include an option to remove the bridge and relocate it somewhere. And I am not advocating that we do that. Please don't shoot me. 
right now. But if it's right now, <laughs> right now, well, you can later, it. Yeah, maybe if you want. But. If hearing aid only, only hurt, shoot me now. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, I'm not advocating that we do that, but if it's not in the scoping study as an option at some point in the future, yeah, it in, won't be available. When you're saying remove, are you saying remove? and set up somewhere else or remove like tear the bridge down get rid of the total at bridge the 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 scoping study the first one that was done had let's put this business to bed about taking the bridge down and setting it somewhere we're going to fix the bridge there's no if ands or buts about it well that's your opinion we're going to fix the bridge and what we're going to do here, we're not going to spend a ton of money. We're going to get some good welders to look at what needs to be done underneath it and give us a price to fix it. Then we're going to get some, a barn doctor or carpenters to put some new wood on. It's not rocket science to fix a bridge. It really is not. We spend all this time and spend all these wheels and spend all this stinking money on these stupid studies and we get nowhere. We could have taken that money a long time ago and fixed that bridge. Period. But that doesn't fix the flooding. Problem. Yeah, this. Yeah, well, we've good. already taken care of that. We've already got rock on the other side. Okay. If it washes out again, it's not going to take all of the gravel that it took before, and we're just going to put it back. It's, it's simple. It's with like the last two floods. It had nothing has happened. The last two floods. Right. It has not been what. Nothing has happened to the in the last two floods, like to the rock and stone. And since it was fixed, well, it is it has stayed strong. So we for grants, we can use this scoping study as long as as long as the grant is not for removal. Unless we put that in a scoping study, but uh -huh. the, the scoping study allows us better chances at grants. You say use this one, and I tried to correct you there because this is the second scoping study because the first one was too old to apply for grants this round. So we spent $43,000 on a re-scoping study. That's what we're on. Right. Probably spent close to that for the first one. So and then it's just, if we don't do anything in 10 years, then you're going to do another one. Okay, so let's get it fixed now. And the trouble is with these studies and all this grant stuff, we, we tried to do that before. We did that study. We tried to find the grants and then it just ran out of time. Then we have to do it again. We need to crap or get off the top. I feel like fix that bridge. I feel like we're talking about two separate things here. Yeah. I'm all for repairing the bridge, but we're talking about what we want in the scoping study. And I am not immensely opposed to having a remove the bridge. In, in the scoping study, not supporting removing it, but that costs money for removing a bridge. But you know, those people just don't sit around well, and, and twiddle their thumbs well, when they have to do that plan to remove the bridge. We do not want to remove the bridge. We paid $43,000 for a scoping study. We're in the final portions of it, and we can get this thrown in or not. We already spent the money. Yeah. Well. I think it's a waste of time because I, I don't want to take that bridge out there. And I think the vast majority of the people in this community do not want that bridge gone either. So you're wasting your time by thinking about removing that bridge. You can use this study to justify that very opinion. And so then when you apply for grants in the next round of funding from AOT or Historic Preservation, you can say that the community in this scoping study, we found the community is against removal. So that's not an option. Therefore, we must repair in place with this option, you know. And so, like, you can use this. Okay, if, if, you know what I mean. Like, like, like right. we're just telling them what to if put that's in. If that's a bargaining chip, then fine. Maybe then. You know, it's about how do we how do we use this to get money later? And so, you really are saying, what do we want to do? We want to save the bridge. And we want to save the public infrastructure. So let's. We want to. That's our message. And here are the options. How? And then we go forward. So my question. When you say removal, are you talking about no bridge at all? Or are you talking about removing just the covered bridge portion and building a 
a concrete deck bridge. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's already bridge replacement in the sculpting study. There's already a replacement in the sculpting study. Yes. I'm saying we could add to the sculpting study, get rid of it, return the channel to natural. I'm not advocating for it. It's a natural waterway. Okay. All that would do is a future select board has an option. But if we just Sounds like we got two people against removal. We got two people for it. But you're just talking about a study. That's that's all we're talking about. That's it. You're not doing it. No. That's no. way too heavy for me to lift. <laughs> no, in the direction of the board towards the engineers to say we don't actually want to do this to justify, you know, one, two, three, four, and option five is the least valuable option. But then you, and then when you do your grant application later. You say this is why we want to, we want the six hundred thousand dollars because number five is not viable. Okay. If anybody on that select board wants to remove that bridge, everybody ought to get a new rope and find the trees. My God. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Let me make sure I understand. Uh, what we're not talking about a new scoping study. We're talking about. Adding, them to add adding it to this one. Something. We spent a lot of money on this. This is our last chance. Yep. Let's add it in now because we're not going to do another one for 10 years. I follow. I okay. want to do a disclaimer. That's my last comment. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> it makes sense. It does make sense. You want to get the rope? Are you? I cannot imagine any scenario in which I would want to see that bridge removed, but I think if it gives us a better case for grants to fix it, then great. Do you have consensus, Tom? Do you need a motion? I, I feel like we're no. back and forth no. a lot here. I'm just well, you're all worried just, about those I'm gonna reach out to the engineer and say, can you add this option to justify the earlier options? And if they say yes, add it. If they say no, we can't do that, I'm going to say don't add it. Then we'll have the full scoping study ready for the approval and the full re scoping study. There'll be a final presentation and it'll be ready to go. And when, what's the time frame on this scoping study final? Uh, I guess we know for there this morning. So my guess would be 11 4 or 11. Oh, really? Yeah, we probably have it in two weeks or four weeks. Yeah. Do we have to have a public hearing? It's a public meeting, it's not an official hearing. It just has to be at a more public meeting. So we would probably, you know, based on her timeline, it would either be the first or second meeting in November, I guess. It does seem like perhaps more wood, something should go on the bridge because what is already in ruined. Like, hasn't really been maintained after this. Yeah, and I think that's actually a different, that wasn't. That's a different question, but I'm just yeah. saying it does seem like. So the, the road foreman did bring that up two weeks ago, that it needs to happen. Unfortunately, Before winter. This study only addresses flood mitigation, right? And um, whereas so maintenance and repairs would be like a whole a different grant cycle to a different right. Set of purpose. Okay. I don't know if you need a scoping study for that. So okay. Along, <laughs> no, it just looks like somebody yeah. has to slap up some wood, so it's going to be worse. Uh, along, maybe, maybe. along those lines, <laughs> what do we have in our budget for repairs? What do we spend? I don't know, but somebody brought up. I believe the a prospect. former select board member thought about repairing that bridge. Yeah, that's right. I think the, the Michael and I volunteered to. He's yeah, gonna, like he's, he's the tree squirter. Repair the bridge. Or repair the bridge. We'll get a crew to go there. Squirt it with the beetles. We'll do it in the middle of the night and have a bunch of lights on it so we don't have to get involved. With all kinds of things. Uh, so we budgeted careful, careful. Careful stuff and everything else. Yeah. We just use a man lift. We budgeted nineteen thousand dollars for bridges contracted services. I'm not sure if it would fall under there, but I think the board would be interested in knowing what it would cost to repair it. Siding. Is that something, is that something Jason can do? To yeah, I'll let him know. I think the man, can Jason do the repairs or can he do the Estimating. Can he put together 
an estimate, I guess. I don't think he can do the repair. Well, we, at our last board meeting, not to beat a dead horse, but we, I believe we asked Tom to investigate, or maybe Randall, to right. investigate options for, maybe it was Randall. It was Randall, Randall. For, for, for grants. grants. Right. But, you know, a simple, you know, isn't there issues with the beams underneath? Like, there's structural issues too. Well, there's some problems. Uh, some I, think, problem. I think the boards could be repaired relatively cheaply. That's Maybe what I'm thinking. Way out in left field. Well, the, the issue with repairing the boards is how do you access them? You know, you're going to either have to do it in extreme low water conditions and hope for the best, put staging up, and or with a lift. I or, think a man lift would just yeah. reach right out there. Yeah, I don't know if you could reach. You might be able to. We might be able to reach both sides. Get rid of logs and you can saw them up. Thank you. All right. Okay. Are we on? Are we on to our next one? Thank you, folks. Hmm? Oh, it'd be yeah. really good. Yeah. Well, I'll give it a hammer on it. Saw it up. Put it on the front. Review of the library's RFP and location decision. Tom, you did email us out that you didn't have the RFP together, right? Correct. And um, I got a text from Kelly that on Thursday we're going to meet with one of the movers. So one of the things that I don't want to, I don't want to put out an RFP or prepare one. We have, we've met with one mover. It'd be nice to meet with another mover and we've spoken with a third. Um, to just figure out what is the realistic expectations for that RFP, like what are they able to do and not do? Um, we're hearing different things from different companies. So after talking to them on Thursday, I'll be able to put that together and send it to you. I have some confusion, Can but pass those around. Okay. Like grab one and pass them around. Specifically surrounding, uh, like you know, how who works with the utility company? How is that done? I think in an RFP, you tell them. We don't, well, we don't need to put it in the RFP, do we? Well, I just would like to hear, like, what are the ramifications, like, what are they able to do and not do? And I've heard it from two different companies, one over the phone, one in person, and they have very different answers. And so it'd be nice to hear the third company, just so you have a full, a full understanding of, like, what a building mover does and doesn't do. Mm. I don't know that I understand. They move big things. It is. You know, and so one company, we were kind of hands off. The other company, we had to add a bunch of fill, remove a bunch of grade. And so it would just be nice to know, like, what is the standard expectation and what? So it seems to me that there's two ways of approaching it. One would be to put out an RFP that says, you're responsible to move the building from here to there. And all the nuts and bolts of between everything that's required to submit a proposal. Right. Um, and the other way would be to come up with a detailed set of bid specifications, which I don't think we could do. I don't want to do it. No, I don't think we have time. So I'm like, I want to stay out of it as far as possible, right? And so I think that that third building mover will tell us if we need a general contractor or, or if they do it well, all. Wouldn't we just put that on them? Wouldn't we just say, and you're responsible to get the building think, from here to there. Yeah, and like one of the conversations, they pretty much would do that already as it's part of their price. And so I think I would just like to talk to the third company to see and then send it to you guys for review. I'm fine with well, we, we guess when's, when's our deadline on this? Next September or something? Uh, next December. December, December 31st. December 31st. Yeah. So this is we have to move, put, we have to move yeah, this thing yeah. along because you're talking about them moving it, but you're also talking about them putting it on a foundation that they absolutely and putting addition on the back. Absolutely, yeah. So it's not just the move. And coordinating with the utility company for them ordering ordering parts and it's, it's quite a okay. Yeah, you know what was that what was that deadline again? December, December 31st. 31st. Well, you mean like two months from now? No, no. 2025. But it's still really tight yeah. to pull, yeah. pull all this. I, think. I do think that the library might be the standing item 
prolong the industrial park for a lot of meetings. Well, I think so. I mean, <laughs> we might just have a no update and move on, but we'll probably see those headers in every meeting. Are, are we because the library likes to spend time with us and they're really going to like it come budget season next month, right? All right, so Tom. Uh, so I called Mumley after our last meeting and they put together, uh, they had to do a site plan anyways for the permitting required for this. And so they just threw together two conceptual ideas. Um, the rest of it was something that they had to do uh, just by the nature of putting together the wastewater permit and the potential act of 50 that they're putting in for a jurisdictional work. Duncan has handed out. Can you explain? I can. Uh, is this explain this like you would want Mark to understand. It. Right. Is right. this similar so, to the email that I'm looking at? I did I send that to you? No, the email. No, the email is from, from. Yeah, the email is from Tom. The one that I handed out is three sheets. Uh, These are from okay. our parcel maps. Um, one of them shows ostensibly the extent of the. Uh, Flood zone. That's the one that has the blue hash marks around the river. Is that the hundred year floodplain? I assume it must be the hundred year floodplain because uh, Mumley's. And this is all on the 80 set, 87 FEMA maps. Yeah. It is. So this is irrelevant if you ask. Is that the hundred year? That. If I look on the big one. Yeah, they're already located. So it doesn't even show School Street on the map. Uh, <laughs> I know, but I mean, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, uh, yes, that's right there. Tells us uh, right. Yeah, that's first 100 year, 500 gets where it will get a lot of up close. Yeah, that's okay. shown, that's nice. shown on this map. All right, can you um, explain the next page? Okay, so the right, next the, the next page, I think, is the one that has the orthophoto overlay or the satellite imagery yeah. overlay. Um, which, by the way, Howard shows the pavilion, uh, the bandstand half on the whole oh, lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> I wanted the land. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually in that And then the next one is a simple parcel map showing the lot. So the, the lot is uh, the former alumni house lot. And the, and the picture, um, the first picture that you're seeing um, actually has the alumni house, the footprint of the alumni house lot on it with takeoffs, you know, from the corner. So that's just by, that's just by way of referencing yourself to the, okay. to the set. And uh, you guys should know that I did the uh, whole study on this myself. So Tom, uh, the conceptual drawings. So, when we put this together, you can see it has the FEMA cross section on School Street with the different FEMA maps associated. And at each building location, he has the first floor elevation, has to be what the elevation of that should be um, in the existing library. And I think um, when he called back, the one of the problems was the drainage and he addressed that with a drainage swale and catch basins along that's on the east concept so at this point um essentially what he came up with is that whatever side you choose it's very feasible and and if we're talking about a difference of a foot and a half and we that's very main for that first floor elevation has to be 507 on the next to the school or 505.5 if it's next to the studio center it's whatever the board wants and um and these these are conceptual drawings it's just placement that's going to be up to an architect later but it just shows you at either location it's the complexity mm -hmm. of the beach so in, in uh, personally, I'm in favor of the easterly right-hand side location. Alumni law. Alumni law. Um, and it's going on a foundation. 
So we add a foot and a half or whatever. That's right. And right. Essentially, and by elevating a foundation to 507, you're putting in a swale by the nature of the shape of the plot, right? So a lot of the problems are solved just by the nature of building there. And again, like the shape of the building and the shape of the parking lot should be determined later. It's just, where do you want it? And then we'll move forward with architectural choices. And I can say, uh, for those of you who might find, it, find this interesting, that um, uh, Tuesday Night Live approved of the eastern location, not the western location under the circumstances. Yes. No surprise there. No surprise there. Yeah, I always figured it was going to be on the east side anyway. Do you have a question, Mark? I do. I, I bring this up continually, the caveats of the college giving us that land. Has anybody ever looked at those? All the element. You're talking about that weird piece? I'm talking about Legion Field. Came no, from this is owned by the elementary school. I understand This is owned that. by the college. This we own. Okay, so if we keep it all the way to the right, we don't care about the caveats on that. No, no, no. And I, I talked to uh, the weird double triangle piece. Yeah, uh, a couple right. weeks ago about that, and he said, you know, everybody, everybody thinks it's a good idea, but nobody wants to pay the lawyers to actually make it happen because it's such an inconsequential thing. So, are you talking about the little, the yeah. little odd shape? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay. But, but I think Mark is talking, Mark is under the impression, and I don't know where you get this from, but he's under the impression that Legion Field has deed restrictions, caveats on the app, which were originally when it by came the college. from the college to the town. Really? Yes. And, and what's the basis for your knowledge on that? Something he spoke last night. <laughs> uh, very similar. At, at one point, we were talking about doing some odd things with that field. You're, maybe it was the Main Street Committee or something, talking about what, what other purposes could that field have. And I think the deed has restrictions on it, that it has to be recreation or something. I just remember being on a committee and that came up. And it was 20 years ago. The, the college, the, I didn't know, I always thought it was the town's property forever, but apparently the college gave it to the town. Well, it's kind of a moot point anyway. Right, it is a moot point. Concept. Yeah. Yep. So, but, so this is perfectly fine. This is, what were you going to say, Tom? Oh, that just, I think at this point, what's nice to know is the engineer can make both sides work. And so when, where do you want it to work? And like this just came out this afternoon. All, all of it is very basic. We can, you want a board temperature? And then I also would like, can I move forward to put out an RFP for architectural services as well? You want a board temperature? I'll go first. It's a controversial topic. I'd like to see it on alumni a lot. I won't be supportive of it going on each other. East side. That's the one I just said, isn't it? No, you were pulling more and I'm just saying oh. east side for me. Like we know where you stand. Yep. East side. Peter, you want to be the odd doc here? Uh, east alumni. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm going to make the further caveat understanding that this is not a hard and fast design, but and I know you said this afternoon that it's up against the front of the street to comply with form-based code. That was the initial, yeah. But I'm gonna argue that, um, uh, whatever it is, Hill Road is also a town highway and it actually is a longer street front than School Street is my, my idea my all my all along my thought process was push it to the back of the lot as much as you can. But so and I'm, I would tend to agree ooh. with you because I feel like the entrance to the library is on the front of it. Right. And if it's snugged up against and people are parking on the side, are we going to put a side entrance on? I hope. And the basic tenet of form base is to not park in front of the building. That's, the, that's one of them. And, and I'm totally happy with that. Which, but I think you, know, you push the, 
you which, push the building all the way to the back. On which street you're considering the front? Are you considering the yeah. front School Street or are you considering the front George Hill Road that goes up by the school? I guess yeah, I'm certainly not there because that's really, I know it's public way, but it's used exclusively by <coughs> elementary school. Or we're in the it's, a town, it's a town highway. It's a town highway. Right. 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 Well, so yeah. the other, other, yeah. other places use it as well. It's not just the school. No. Right. Um, but I guess would it be okay? sounds like there's consensus on location. Can I put out the RFP with for architectural services, which will do three things. One, the work with Mumley for the continued final permitting. Mm -hmm. Two, they use part of that RFP will include them to uh, do the structural engineering for the building. And that oftentimes most architectural firms either have a structural engineer or have do the structural engineering. One and three, um, We'll solve these site plan solutions of which street it should be on, parking, addition, porch, etc. We will move it along. We and we have to have one no matter what. For what it's worth, I like how we're laid out better. Sure. Yeah. I think it's pretty much the same. Thank I you think know. I think it correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you shoehorned in that the addition was for town use, not library use, right? What? It says town use entrance library, right? On your plan? Oh, town use, that's just, that just identifies the use of that, that particular building. So that's like, that's all that is, is that part of the storage for Tuesday Night Live? No, oh, no, 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 no. Okay. But that doesn't take into a proposed addition of the library of an additional 40 storage. My guess is that town use would be library addition. It's just yeah. wording. It is. Okay. And I chose to put the put the entrance to the library, the new entrance, with an elevator. You know, you're going to need an elevator if you go up with the floor, porch. You're going to need an elevator, and that's that's not very good. But it's got to go somewhere, and the stairs have to do that too. So that's why I'm, I I've got that in the middle of these two buildings, and I'm the end as long as so. Yeah, I don't know. Your parking, that, your parking your parking lay a lot better too. I love oh, yeah. your I love your parking. Charlie? So when you're a library form based code, you might want to take a look at how form based code applies to the library and make a change to form based code in that report. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Um, but it is in the court. So Tom's Tom's asking if he can prepare an RFP. I I'm fine with him preparing an RFP for architectural services. I wouldn't mind seeing it before it goes out, but um, the board can give it a lot of time to prepare or ask for what's we need to give moving forward. You guys mind if I have a look at it too? Certainly not. I think you should. Sure so if Duncan said he would like to look at it too, is there a third board member that wants to look at it? Or you guys just want to Make a motion to authorize town to prepare an RFP and get approval from the chair and vice chair before sending. I feel like I'm crafting it for you, but yeah, I'd like to. I'll make the motion. Were you clear on that one, Donna? Want to repeat it one more time? The motion was to authorize Tom to prepare an RFP for architectural services and send it out upon approval from the board chair and vice chair. And yeah, you can look at ours. But there's no second, so it's not second. <laughs> Will you make a motion? Or he he make a motion. Right? He he made a motion. motion. I'll yeah. second. And we'll we'll motion a second. Further discussion? Will this um, include the addition to the library in these architectural services? Do we know? I think, I think we're just looking for architectural services. Yeah, we do. just so, looking. Okay. Mom, we just put blocks on paper. Based on what the grant said, it was forty by forty building, forty by forty addition, sixteen by forty, okay. and so they they just did it to like put space so you guys can make the decision tonight where, and then the architect is actually going to make it look like what, what may look like. That, that engineers don't do that. Architects. Do. All right. So I'm I'm confused now. Are, are you going to put out an RFP for architectural services or for a specific building layout? Architectural services. Said it was okay. For services. Okay. Right. There's a motion and a second. Further discussion? I can live with that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. 
What's the library's thoughts on the location? She's fighting your turn. Nobody said anything. <clears throat> you guys outnumber us right now. You can take us down. <laughs> We're a lively bunch, though. So our position is that we need more information. Um, we are interested in the very best place on Legion Field for the library. And I feel like we need professional advice um, because we don't want to build the library in another place where it's going to have drainage issues from the hill behind or the front of it's going to flood because it's in the 500 year flood zone. We've had enough flooding. <laughs> and so we don't, you know, we're not really emotionally attached to either place. Um, so we just feel like we need an architect, we need advice. Okay. So that's, you know, and we, we just, we want to cooperate with the select board and we would just like to know kind of what the expectation is from the trustees because we're elected to oversee the building of the library <laughs> and so we want to know how we do that before the grant um, we always looked at a job and thought, you know, we need a rope repair. And so we would have people come and bid on it and we would choose and, and the trustees would kind of do repairs and things like that. But with the grant, because you guys are involved, we're not sure what our role is and how um, you would like us to, to help. So um, that was a lot. Maybe uh, we need clarification. Yeah, in a positive way. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I kind of raised this issue at our last meeting. Um, my understanding of a few years doing this that the town owns the building and the lot. Yeah. Um, and that the town is actually responsible ultimately for repairs. Like when you guys did the insulation. You came and presented something to the town, and the town said, "Go ahead and do it. Yeah. Make it happen." Um, so I think that's kind of a, uh, I think that's kind of a relationship here. But what I threw out there as a concept is, do we want to turn the building and the lot over to the library and have you do the whole thing? Well, I don't think any of us on the trustee board is qualified to make those. It makes you think we are. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're probably more important. <laughs> yeah, and the, I've, been, I've been talking to some of the movie companies and things, and uh, one person that I've been talking to, the first question he asked is, he says, well, who is your construction manager? He's, you know, like most big jobs like this have, a person that is the manager that kind of, you know, knows all, knows all the things yeah, and helps yeah. choose the people that he's going to use and all that kind of thing. And I just feel like we really need somebody like that that is kind of overseeing the project, somebody that is qualified to okay. make those decisions. You want a clerk for the works or an actual general contractor? Yeah, which we talked That's about true. in the last yeah. meeting a little well, bit about Mumley, um, how that kind of slows things down. He said it, the architect in place for, um, and then from there, between both of their services, the engineer and the architect, they'll be able to define the scope that's lacking. And then that's where the general contractor would fit in to, to, to do all the missing pieces. Um, each architectural firm offers different services. And so until we hire somebody, we might not know what that is. So just, you know, after talking to Tyler, moving forward with the architectural, and then he just sent that plan this morning. I think he gave it to me this afternoon. Um, seems like that's the next first step, but I do think uh, hearing from both the engineer and an architect of who they suggest or how the process should be would be these are people who've done it a million times. So I think we 
we need help on advice for process, but also on advice for um, the actual project itself too. So we're also gonna have a bridge that we got across pretty soon. Maybe this somewhat gets to your point, Kelly. Again, I, I mentioned earlier, there's really two kinds of bidding process. So there's a, a design build concept and there's a bid specification process. We, I think at our last meeting, agreed to hire Mumley as our engineer of record on that. So I, I think at, at the end of the day, we need, to, we need to decide, are we going to do a bid specification, which any contracting firm can look at those and submit a bid based on those specifications, or are we gonna do a design build concept where the general contractor says we give them the basic layout yeah, and do. they give us a price, you know. Um, so those, I think we need to cross that bridge at some point. That's a pretty big one. What gives us the best deal? Wow. Some people have really good luck with design builds concepts. We did a design build on the fire station. I'll tell you right now, I don't think that was a great idea. I don't think it worked out that well. Yeah. There were a lot of cost overruns. The answer is like any other answer, right? It depends who you end up with. It right? does. It totally. really does. Design yeah. build a lot of times is a little bit cheaper, but more profitable on the contractor side. Well, and you don't get as big a return. <clears throat> Where are the trustees going to weigh in on this design? I mean, it seems like you folks would. I mean, we might just put up a concrete block structure with a. I I would hope that the trustees would weigh in on the design a little bit. We are we are really committed to trying to preserve the historical uh, aspect of the building. And I am too, but there's going to be a an addition that yes. might be nice to have it blend in. That's exactly to some what extent, we have. and to have. And I like all the wainscoting and stuff that's in the existing building. Yeah. I mean, that's further just, down the road. I know. <laughs> it is, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have a budget. And if it's gonna cost an extra quarter of a million dollars to do the wainscoting. I know, but I would trust the sports taste in architecture. Maybe Evans. But, but you know. Could look at He's just going to look at architectural else. rendering, right? Yeah, that's um, what I'm hoping that we'll have some sense in that you folks will weigh in on that. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're going to get a concrete block building. Yeah. Attached. I'd go with Howard. <laughs> huh? What? I'd go with you. For what? I would go with. Well, you know, for design. Oh, aren't you sweet? No. I would go with a plan and spec. You don't allow for this town. No. I know. I'm uh, mad at Al. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, an, arch an architectural firm went through all, almost all of these questions before you were the first meeting. So, exactly about all you want, but all the architectural firm will make recommendations to you about the future of your project and perhaps the best and most economical way to get it. So is that who we're going to go to? That's that was the advice of Mumbley. Is that's the next step? Get an architectural. We need to get an architect on board and move forward. Is it safe to assume that the library will be here every time you guys are on the agenda? Pretty much. Yeah. All right. That'd be smart. Okay. Maybe we'll try to push those up towards the beginning of the meeting. I appreciate everybody's patience. Where are we at? Uh, in a good effort here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there because when you hear about the Arboretum right away edition, would you like us to talk about kennels and joint meeting agendas, budget process, old business, and other stuff first? Or do you want to just yeah. go right? All right. <laughs> Is the board all right with pushing Susan up? Yes. <laughs> Did we add that to the agenda? It was added at okay. the beginning. I have a note that says ARB, R O W work, parentheses Tom. I do that because you're the one that asked to add it, not necessarily because you're the one reporting on it. Um, so I spoke with Susan and Jason today. I knew it was coming, but I didn't have all the information. 
this morning, um, Susan would like to put in a four foot wide right away if you stay in that path, which I think the board has already discussed this about trying to make the Arbor Vita more visible. Um, right now is the best time for the road crew to provide that service. Um, the hiccup is they have the time to do it. They don't have the material. The material typically comes from millings from asphalt. We didn't pave this summer, so we would have to buy stain mat and fabric instead of using milling. Uh, this is going to cost probably an additional $2,500 $2, to $2,500 between the two. Um, so either we wait and do it at the end of next fall, waiting year, and we use the millings for free, or we spend $2,500 now and put the stain mat path in from Clay Hill until all the way down to the Culver, where I drive. Is that pretty much sum it up? You can't buy millings cheaper than stay mat. I, I think you can get them for free if you go the right way. Yeah, they, yeah. they certainly did a lot of it. Huh? They certainly did a lot of it. I know, that's what summer. I was thinking. There must have been truckloads of free I, stuff kicking around. Jason and I did not discuss that. Well, if you, want, if you want those screen millings that they make sand with, they're crazy expensive. But that's not so the millings pile that was over there is all used up? It's all gone, gone. yeah. Dude. Well, they want to get rid of it in the same year because they don't want it to. Oh, no. Clump back together and have a big old pile. Millings, I guess. We yeah. added that to the floodplain fall. I guess <laughs> easier for maintenance. I guess yeah. when they pack them down, they this weeds better than stain that, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We can't ask Hyde Park Marshville still. I'm happy to. It was just it felt felt kind of hard work. Quick bang. You know, hard work has asphalt. Yeah, I have just no idea. I mean, I, I would check with Pike and see if they. Because of the timing, would you guys approve an amount for JDC to spend up to, knowing that it's like a special project, even though it's less than three thousand? So it's say it's two thousand dollars for the stain mat and fabric, or twenty five hundred. If we go to millings, it still might be a thousand dollars. If you could make that motion tonight, then Jason and Susan could move forward without waiting to November fourth. Yeah, so what, what, what line item are we coming out of here? It would come out of highway somewhere. I think we would just overspend on arboretum. You know, it's just like a, the nature of the beast. This was a separate discussion that you guys had and accepted. I mean, I, but the money's got to come from somewhere. Given the time of year, I mean, I would rather see us budget $2,500 for next year. Speaking of, of uh, paving, uh, there's no plans to pave anything until next year. No. Can can you or Jason or somebody present us with what the plan is for paving next year? Yeah, that was. I'd love to know. Yeah. Uh, and the other question, I guess, for you, Sue, would be: Has has anybody contacted? Uh, I can't for the life of me remember the lady's name that owns the house with the Mrs. Roach. Yeah. She has given permission to have work done. Okay. Well, she. Everybody agrees on where it would be located. And, I think down the middle of the right of way. It's all on her land. Yeah, it is all on her land. Um, you know, the, when you say in the middle of the right of way, there was a survey done by Bob Fry, if I remember correctly, that kind of shows the right of way, but the, that deed is somewhat non explanatory about where the right of way actually exists. So, I guess my point is it would be good to get her written consent as to where it should be located. She said she would be happy to sign something. Okay. That, that, I agree. Written consent. Does Donna, Donna, Donna doesn't own it. Sure. Does, does Donna own it or does the family trust it? No, I think, think Carl B's daughter owns it. Yeah. She's there with a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, that would be my only concern is if we put it in and someone from the family comes along and says, What'd you do that for? Um, it would be nice to have something that we could Mr. Chair, fall are you back. Mocking at it this year? I am. Because we're minutes away from starting the budget process. We're just talking about blowing lines out of the water. Is it something that could wait till next year? 
The problem is, for four years, people have been standing on the sidewalk under the sign saying, how do you get there? And uh, it's a perennial problem. We wanted for four years to do something to improve it, and now we've got a chance. So, um, did you just say it's a perennial problem? <laughs> 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 an annual problem. <laughs> Why don't we just get it over with? Now? Right where they are. So you can make a motion. Make Always a motion, stop. we take care of it. We uh, spent up to $2,500 on this, uh, and hopefully we can get them cheaper. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? You said $2,500. We're going to both do $2,500 on labor. The labor is uh, budgeted. We're not signing overtime, so it's even though they're just not doing something else. As our old sweat, they got to be there anyway. <laughs> they're right. going to be there anyway. Eating away. There's no other projects going on, apparently. Well, nice project. Be a nice day. So you, More to do for it. clarification, your motion was on material. Basically. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Really? And the ayes have it. I don't think we have to do a roll call because everybody's present. I'm sorry? Yeah. You and Jason and I connect tomorrow. And I think this is a place to do it. Hallelujah. Anybody got a bottle of champagne? All right. <laughs> so our uh, next. One one question, do you, do you want to give me a document to have her sign? That's what I want to meet about is what Jason's capability is to define meets and bounds. Okay. Well, it's 10 foot right away with a four foot path in it. We just did some work with I mean, our... not, not to state the obvious here, but didn't we just say the lady's willing to sign it and go and own the property? Well, like Donna, Donna, I don't think actually owns it. So, so her signing something, if that is true, it's worthless. Let's awesome. find the owner and have them sign it, right? That's that would be my would thought. Be my thought. All right, cool. I'll or or I'll I'll sign. be a legal owner. I could sign it. Yeah, yeah I could know. sign it. Yeah. Well, then we need to we need to do an amendment to uh, get this right away straightened out. Yeah. We're not gonna spend any money until we just sign it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Just That's get the first it. one. Tom, kennel update. Okay, so are you coming in here your full business? Town sewer service area. Uh, the bonus to do that now. Want to do it now? Can, we, can we do it quick? So you can go home? Do you mind? I, I didn't realize what you were sticking around for, Paul. We got to stick around anyway. <laughs> Take care of it. Duncan, you want to handle that? I, I, I can. Um, Paul, you've seen the back, right? The one. So I'm going to hand this around. Um, so basically, all we're, if you, if you look at this map, the one that we're really talking about is the one on Route 100 C, the one on the right-hand side of the map. So you, you'll see a little green blob and some red lines. Mm -hmm. um, I had asked uh, Alec Jones to put the village boundaries on the map, but he, had, he didn't get back to me today. So um, I think if you could see the village boundaries on here, that this might make a little more sense. Uh, but essentially what, what Alec... Um, did here was if you look at the red lines, he's extending the red line, which would be the new proposed area, to any property that was partially in the town sewer service area. So in other words, he's basically just incorporating the entire parcel of any lot. If was, so, it touches. If, yeah. it, if it is in, not not touches, if it's in it. If, if the full parcel is in it, not. Yeah, just part of it. No, even just part of it. Even just, you know, even six inches. Of it if six inches in, of it is in the other 50 acres. The other yeah. 50 acres gets, gets so, yeah, This addresses Drew Fairbanks. It does. Like the, this, the big you parcel. You'll see one person that really the, is. This yeah. big parcel here is, yeah, is, yeah. is Drew's. Which makes so much sense. So the, the idea, the question for you folks is, uh, is this a concept that you can 
yes. work with to amend the town sewer surface area? Yes. If so, and I, I think I think Paul's co-presented with us, the planning commission. Um, if so, we would ask the the LCPC folks to do a detailed map of both sewer service areas. Um, and they can actually do, Alec Jones actually suggested that we do like a meets and bounds description of the new border rather than just a, dis, a display mm -hmm. uh, on a map. Um, and I think that's all we'll need to do. So in instead terms of doing a new one, we're just amending the existing. We're amending the, yeah, we're basically amending the map. Brilliant. That's so much easier. Really? This well. white industrial park on this. Oh, it's the little slip. That, that little corner is just the portion that's in the town. The rest and of it's in the village. village. So it's the village, already. If they had the village limits on it, you would kind of see like, right. where it's already covered. Yeah. yeah, you would. Peter, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah. What's the plan? Are you peaceful with this? Is this something how you how you in, how you envision the town expanding? Well, we're, it, this is a pretty limited expansion. That it's might be a future discussion. Yeah, I think we discussed yeah. this, including all of your money, like you were saying. Right. We didn't do that. This is just parcels that were formerly partially included in the TSSA already. So it's a relatively limited expansion. But if you look at it, it's quite it's, it's quite a bit acreage. of additional area. It's a lot of acreage. Yeah. You're taking some acreage in both these places and making it much more valuable. Yeah, now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you one thing that I didn't say about the about the Route 15 one. Um, there's quite a bit of the area that he is showing as proposed that is actually already in I was the say town. Laraway is totally in. All a hundred percent of Laraway is in. I think. The section to the south all the way to the river is actually in, already currently in the zone. Um, so really the, the river road section, I mean the um, the Route 15 section really is just that little triangle. It goes, goes up into the- I thought there was one house that's plus, part. plus the industrial park. You know, the one that I'm not sure about is the Blue Spruce Realty lot. Okay. Um, yeah. And that would, that would be incorporated in the in the new change so but if the board's comfortable with the concept Being i'll bring back a more detailed map that we can approve um i don't love it this has been a long time there's going to be one true winner of this change for sure but i'm copacetic with the concept yeah and you know another thing like if you're looking at the southern end of this Route 100C zone, the village line actually cuts through some of those properties. Yeah. So they they're technically already, they're already kind of in the zone. Yep. Um, so it's that's where it would have been nice to see the village, you know, the village. So back. this big this big hunk will get developed. Yeah. Likely. Yeah. It's out of the flood zone though. I'm going to ask Okay. Are you good, Paul? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were sticking around. No, okay. Adrian, are you sticking around for anything? Yeah. Just for Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Tom, can you do the kennel update now? I cut you off. Sorry. Um, so, thank you, thank you. I reached out to Hyde Park. Um, no, there was no response from them. Um, I did visit with uh, our current ACO, Crystal. I do have concerns on her. Um, if she's going to be able to get it done in a timely fashion, I think you know there's they have some work to do at their place to, to add a kennel, and so I think um, cool. they have, it's just their timeline to get stuff done in order to, to host some kennels might be might not be fast enough. Is my concern, and so I asked her to get some more information in two weeks, kind of give us a hard and fast deadline at the next meeting. Um, or else we could probably move forward entirely with this Hyde Park. Um, I don't think the board ever prevented moving forward with Hyde Park. They were yeah. looking for an, an interim, you know, all things ahead approach. I think the board suggested a general preference to go with Crystal if she could get it together. I mean, 
Is that it? I think she wants to. Um, it's just, you know, can we go all year? How long can we go without one? You know, and I think that doing that understanding. So she's going to take two more weeks, pull some stuff, to get some numbers and some timelines together, and then report back. Okay. Um, does the board have any questions? I, I would like to hear back to my part. Yeah, me too. I'll read, I'm going to follow um, up again. While we're on the topic of kennels, Tom dealt with a situation today where we were served a bill for a surrendered dog, but he you straightened that out with Hyde Park and pointed them in the direction of the sheriff's department to seek payment because it doesn't fit our animal control policy. There is provision to uh, our contract contact with the sheriff's department. But we were given a bill. By the sheriff's department? Or? By Hyde Park. For a dog that was uh, brought to the shelter. So it was a cruelty case. Um, it came to the shelter by the sheriff and Hyde Park uh, because the dog was from Johnson, Bill Johnson. Um, it's, the first bill came three months after the dog arrived, so it's pretty hefty. Oh. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I just sent our ordinance to show that the means for which it was impounded didn't mean be our ordinance, so we're not in it. I also provided a copy of the contract showing that um, the sheriff would be responsible and um, just hope, and I ask that they submit the bill to uh, the sheriff's department. Hyde Park is the same sheriff's contract. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that clause got built into their contract too. As a nature of I did ask if they had built the shares yet, and they said no. So, presumably, it's going to be sorted out. Okay. Thank you for the update. Does the board have any further questions on the kennel? Hopefully, you get back to my park and Crystal. Yeah, I'd love to hear from something going on. Yeah, put some pressure on Crystal because I'd love to, you know, personally, I'd love to keep it in town. Right. Yeah. I'm with you. If Crystal. Yeah. Can get the insurance and the desire yeah. and the facility and, and yeah. all, yeah. Okay, humane, humane facility, not just not staked out to a post <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a piece of coal with dirt. a whip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, joint meeting agenda topics. Okay. So next item. Yeah. <laughs> Should we? You know, one of the things I emailed somebody about was um, you emailed. I went. I did. I probably just emailed Tom just about um, talking to them about Rosemary Secession planning. Yeah, we started talking about it in the office. That's a, the office. Yeah. yeah, but do you mean should the town talk to the? It might. It might be an interesting thing to, you know, because Rosemary's. Works for them, works for us. Should we inform them that we're planning on having a town vote to um, appoint the next town clerk? Which I don't think we need to inform them. I mean, they did it. Okay. Yeah. If we don't need to inform them, if, if they're aware of how things are changing, that they're going to need their own treasurer. And... Well, they already, they already voted to make it... Uh... Appointed rather than voted, right? Yeah. Didn't they last year about that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we don't need to talk about it. I just. It might be a good topic for a future year. Yeah, I think next year is the game year. We, we need to get it on our warning this year. For this year. Because she's going to retire next year. Right. Right. Well, yes, it, we, need well, to vote yeah. on it. we need to vote on it. So it yeah. needs to yeah. go in this. Yep. Yes, and, and the way that works is a little funny. We'll have to, if it gets passed... We'll have to have a job offer for the next We'll day. have to immediately hire her back for a year or whatever. I think the village did it. They didn't Six do it at all, did they? Later. <laughs> they got the work there. Oh, God. So, uh, the website's going to be a pretty quick conversation topic, right? 
Are you guys interested in being part of it or not? We're going to select the bidder. Um, holidays? Uh, who proposed that? Holidays. That came from, we had a little staff meeting, if you will, everybody in the office. No. Um, and that actually was the morning that this went out. And that was something that uh, Rosemary brought up with that village holidays are different than town holidays. And should they match? Should we have two separate personnel policies? But it, it's hard on some employees that have to use either work half a day or use CTO time for that remaining half a day. It, just, it creates a unique situation where it would be easier if they matched or we had separate policies or separate employees. But the way it is now, it creates resentment in the office. Would the board like to talk about that one at a joint meeting or just deal with it on our own? I think the greater question is should we have a separate a separate personnel policy for the town Yeah, but I don't is that really a joint topic? Not really. Mm. Yeah. Who all is shared between the town and the village? Nobody. So it's there used to be shared employees. Now there's shared services. They're reimbursed across entities. Right. Everyone is either a town or village of town. Period. There's no so, shared employee. So yeah. indigenous people are not working like 20% for the village and 80% for us. So, well, I mean, the, the split, right? Rosemary and Susan are both 60% town, 40% village. Marla is 20% town, and Lydia is 60% town. But correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, Susan, and Lydia are all town employees. Marla is a village employee. Rosemary is an elected official. So she yes, is, yes, you're right. Yeah. But her paycheck comes from the town and the village resources. And she is subject to most aspects of the personnel policy, except for the dismissal and yep. Yep. grievance and all that stuff. As you were saying, Tom. Well, just so. Indigenous Peoples Day, um, village head off, the town did not. And so that just like sparks controversy amongst co workers that feels unnecessary. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this last yeah. December, right? Different board. The village took away two assigned holidays or two floating holidays and gave three assigned. They gave one day. Just you know, does it so sound? Does could an employee take President's Day off as a voting holiday? I, I think you're right, but I think I think if you just me, my opinion, just being down in that environment now, this is the second cycle I've started. If they just matched, mm -hmm. then they don't argue. Then there's no you get this or you get that, and it's just copacetic. And and it means, yeah, we're giving a day, but they're also losing those floating holidays. I think just for the sake of peace, having a match or being totally separate and just acknowledging, you know, back to Duncan's point about different personnel policies, one or the other would just take that away. And it doesn't matter which one you choose, but I think making it clean and separate is... is now, if we had two personnel policies, they'd still be Yeah. Two shit. They went... I know because still we when I first started, there were two separate personnel policies. And that was one of the big issues. Oh, those guys get. No. We only got thirty seven cents the difference hours. between the the two on holidays. So I just indigenous peoples. So the town has two floating holidays, and the village um, yeah. has Indigenous Peoples Day and President's Day instead. Uh -huh. And then the village added uh, the day after Thanksgiving. Is that correct? They added um, Martin Luther King to the two, didn't they? I think I'll I have to. I don't think they added the day after. I think the day after Thanksgiving was already in there. I think they added Martin Luther King. Day. Well, there's some people think that everybody should have every single federal holiday off. You know, I mean, to make it really simple, matching would be the easiest. That's a quick vote from you guys. You're, you're giving a day, but. Um, yeah, but and we're giving it to like, the road crew also. 
Well, there, there you go. I was just going to well, say I, this entire I, there, context there. of conversation is all this filled. Well, are, are they, but are you giving it to the road crew because they have their own union contract with their own set of holidays? I mean, the only reason that the village gave it to the office crew was because they gave it to their union. Right. I see. I didn't the union that. negotiated it with the village manager helping them. And then they. Yeah. And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't. Doesn't aren't the holidays for the under the union contract determined by what the, what personal holiday says? No, there's it's 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 written specifically I'm under the sure it's defined because if it was what the personnel policy was, they never would have added them. And plus, there's negotiation. I guess it probably sounds like it might have been an oversight when the village just got it changed. Was it an oversight or? To just work out really good. I don't know. Technically, the village amended the personnel policy in a way that required both boards to do it, and they just went ahead and did it. So is it even no. I don't know. But, <laughs> I mean, is exactly. that inaccurate? No. <laughs> but I guess. I mean, the one question I think that they that's asked is why doesn't the board just match the village, or why doesn't the board just Make it your own. Well, they have plenty of banks to take care of that. Yeah, I, I don't know if the question is asked. Why doesn't the board just do a separate policy? I I think we have a very generous combined time off policy. More than that generous. That is extremely flexible and can be rolled over and added up. You're right. um, right. And how much does a day of CTO cost the taxpayers? I don't know, but if people really wanted to take Indigenous People's Day off, they certainly could. There is nothing that prevents it. It's eight hours. I took it off. I'm it's glad. Glad to hear it. So, I, I don't know. We're on joint meeting topics. I'm not for talking about holidays in a joint meeting. Striking uh, that. Me neither. All right. Consent, consent from the board. Uh, rate of pay. I believe this is the increased conversation. I feel like this is a little bit early because we're already setting previous boards had set the next year's rate of pay based on last year's CPI in November. for November. So we should have already budgeted for what it is, like we already put it in two and a half percent. You know what it is. I think we just have to finalize it. Is that right? Yeah, we would need to formalize it. Got it. You know, we budgeted, and I guess this board and the new trustee board would need to see if that's how we want to go moving forward. I think that'd be a pretty quick conversation. Is that the same? Is rate of pay the same as wage increases? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I guess it's you put rate of pay. I didn't. Rate of pay. Uh, Wage increases from that. Um, Same thing. Yeah. Health insurance is another topic that we'll talk about. Uh, well, we're we going to be talking about self-funding. Self, self -funding. I do believe that we had tasked Tom to work with Eric on some cost-saving measures. I don't know what they are. Yeah. We're working on two models, one for an immediate change that would say have a significant savings and minimal impact on employees, and then a larger plan to transition into with a union with a union contract negotiations in the spring. That's like what would it's conceptual at this point, but that's what I would like to bring to the board is like make a small change now to help save money, but then when we negotiate union in the spring, bring up Bring a better plan to save even more money at that point. Can we can we see that? I don't want to see that on the thirtieth. We, we just can't. Uh, I'll say it right now out loud. Yeah, that's what, what we're doing. You know how right now we set a two person plan to blue cross blue shield. Yeah, I, I need to I need to yeah. see it in the paper. I can't. Sure. I can't the that. switches instead of using blue cross blue shield as a standard, making MVP the standard, which which has some MVP is a cheaper plan. So that's we just. That's a quick and dirty out. I'll send you that. That was what you and Eric came up with. That was, we yeah, have, well, I mean, there's a much more comprehensive plan, but Eric was uncomfortable with that change before. I mean, you're still going to get it with it now, <coughs> but a more comprehensive plan 
for a transition with new union negotiations in the spring. So that way everybody transitions at the same time. Makes it, that that's just what we were but thinking. But union contract and our union contract don't coincide, do they? I think they do. Both. I think we both negotiate. First I've heard of it. Anyways, that's just Maybe where we're at. Before the, you're going to get the both plan, both ideas, and and maybe even more uh, before the thirtieth. Anyway, so. All right, AC at the town office. Does does this even need to be a joint meeting topic? That's what DJ wanted to talk about. All right. uh, it's a tiny amount of money. I'm uh, waiting on a price from the company to. And if it's if they dictate that it's flood related, I'm going to try to amend the FEMA obligation amount to include those costs as well. And we'll see if that's, but that's that's where we're at. There. Clock tower repairs could be a quick conversation. Nobody knows how much it costs, do we? I guess we're interested, but I, I mean, I think that there's not much to talk about there. Well, there is. There'll, we need do to, we want to repair it or not? And the, the last stance, the village said they'll pay, they'll do it as long as they don't have to pay anything. And so, if the village is willing to pay fifty percent, and you know, then we have action to move forward. We have action to get a price. Where but we haven't had that amount of that they've, never, they've never actually ponied up the money, even though they said. So, to me, the greater conversation is: should we talk about ownership of this building? Um, and at one point in time, at one of the joint meetings, they were conceptually amenable to us owning the building and them paying rent. And I think they changed their mind. You think they did? Yeah. I think you went to one of their meetings and asked them that. Yeah. Is, oh, well, I mean, so if we're talking about just the interest in ideas of ownership in the mill house, village garage, town garage, and this building, just get a yes or no's and the 180 and the 180 acre parcel i don't know what exactly they want with that but just my have, guess is they want money they I, i'm not sure i don't i don't think they're going to give us 90 acres of land you don't think so it's hard <laughs> to believe <laughs> is the board interested in talking about that that, I guess it's just generalized D jointly owning stuff. I guess. Yeah, I think we should have conversations about all of it. But okay. they'd be more than happy for us to own the building. They've said that they would give it to I us. Think so. I think they would. Uh, did they? Is anybody interested? What's that? Did the village? Yeah, they're part of an email thread. Is place. anybody interested in purchasing the village's interest out of the back hole, getting out of that deal or not? How much is it worth? I use back hole 20%. I think it was 50000 was the last trading value. J Jason has that number. So so you're talking about $10,000. bucks. And then what would we do? Rent it to them when they wanted it? It's like we rent their scripts there. We do. Maybe. Uh, it comes did we ever get that upcharge taken care of, by the way? We sure did. <laughs> yeah, we paid it. No, no. They came, um, the next day they came I'm not out. hearing I'm not hearing much interest in that one, so I'm just gonna strike it probably for that. Well my question would be how much longer would we be hanging on to the back? I think it would make I mean last time we talked to Jason in a meeting, it was a little while. Yeah. You just put like 10 grand in hoses and pins and bushings, and they don't use it that much because they rent the excavator every year. Right. right. But they need, you need to have a backhoe because if a loader goes down, you need, the loader has to start every day in the winter to load trucks with sand. And so the backhoe can load trucks. That's right. It's a back, you need to have a second ability to load the trucks. So I think we should buy it. I think we should. Talk about it. I think it should be a topic of discussion. I mean, that's that's super high level, right? I was asking the village, are you interested in selling us twenty percent? If they say yes, we'll just have it professionally appraised and figure out what we can do. Build it into our if nothing else, it'd make it make the resale easier on the other end. We don't have to. We're going to have to reimburse them if we get you know if we get fifty thousand dollars for it. 
we'll have to give them 20% of 50 one way or the other. So, yeah, yeah. which that's we'll do it now is later. And you know, to be honest, that would be really confusing because we would use it as a trade-in value to probably towards another piece of equipment. Right. And then, so we're just gonna have to pay out money to pay less. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like this whole list is here. The one huge cat in the room. There's two of them, but I don't see on your joint municipal plan. Um, you're going to share that wording with Eric, Ken, and VJ. Yep. We're going to talk about it. Hopefully, we have information from the DLCT before this meeting so we can know if we can go it on our own. The other huge one, I don't know if Randall can arrange this or not, but the FEMA, the FEMA recovery plan, long, long term flood recovery plan. Yeah. Anybody that doesn't support that, I think, would be very short sighted. But I think, I guess, can you email Randall to see if he could coordinate that date? Absolutely. And maybe see if he could be there because he can speak the lingo pretty easily. Um, joint meetings are a little bit tough sometimes because we have 10 people instead of five. But mm -hmm. I want those two added. I don't know about the rest of the board. No, I think that's critical that we get that done. And would you envision uh, us being, here us being a vote and then taking a vote to approve it as, as two separate bodies or? I would. Uh, you know, that's what Randall said yeah. at the beginning, that the FEMA would like yeah. support yeah. from both entities. Mm -hmm. I really think that can open a lot of doors in the future. Uh, when did they want to start this meeting? Uh, I just checked the email thread this morning I, or from Mark and earlier today, and there was no time in the email. So you could say 6, that matches their general time, or say 6.30. Let me just check me check in with Eric when he gets back. Five. I guess we're here at six a lot. Let's shoot for six. Mark says five. You good with five? I'm, I'm a coward. We're not gonna throw in the rights of the ten cents on the grandma star. <laughs> no, just take it. You can if you want, Mike. <clears throat> Jeez, so I need to warn this meeting. Who should I reach out to at the village? Because Eric's on vacation until the twenty eighth. It might be too late to warn it. Well, it needs to be warned for 24 hours. Oh, because it's special. But you should get the whole agenda together and send it to me tomorrow, and I'll forward it to Ken and BJ and just make sure they're copacetic or whatever. All right. I think we killed that one pretty good. Budget process. How's the board want to do it this year? Susan wanted me to add holiday party to the joint meeting. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Don't be such a curmudgeon. So I'm going to put six o'clock in as a. Yep, tentative time, six on the 30th. Tom's going to bring coffee and donuts. Yep, I As long as the village pays for them. It's in the budget. <laughs> All right, the budget process. Okay. Hi, Bart. I'm not sure if the board remembers, but I tried to give a little bit of homework at our last meeting to see how you wanted to do it. Has anybody thought about it? I think Beth should do it. <laughs> Just spit it out. Like I said before, we, we uh, kill ourselves to save a penny. The school will take care of that. Ah! And I think the idea of two board members working with Tom to prepare and submit a first round budget to the full board is a great idea. Who do the two members want to be? I'll do it. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. This is great. This makes me really happy. Mark, are you, <laughs> Mark, are you complacent? I'm are you complacent? Peaceful. To first round draft? You guys can do it. I, I, I like Mike's idea. Are you okay with that, Peter? Yeah. We can talk on the side, but. Yeah. Show us the budget with a percent and a half increase or something. Percent and a half? Do you want to do half a percent? I want to do it. I want to oh, do it. Okay. I have to do it. Just, 
It makes such a big deal out of it. Every I wanted year. to do a 20% increase. Every year, it makes such a big deal. You wanted to do a 20%. Do, does the board want to set a target for a total budget increase? or? That's, well, how, I've, that's how I've always done it. What are we giving for raises? 2.5? Well, living allocation is 2.5%. So I think that's that, what, that would be, it. generally, I would say. If you should hit that or less, two and a half percent. Two and a half percent. Anything less than that, you're cutting services. Anything more than that, you're raising services. But two and a half, if you can hit that, you're <clears throat> That okay. would be the parameter that I would ask well, for. Well, if we're going to hire a brand new city planner, we're going to have to increase the budget. Right? Yeah. Thanks. What is that going to be? You'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I think we already covered your old business item, Duncan. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on that was in there? Again, I apologize. This was my fault. Tom specifically asked me, and I said, do it like this. Does anybody else see anything on that list? Oh, um, I guess, so I, I have a question. ATV ordinance is on there. Does that need to be on there still? Uh, that's on joint. No, that's on old business. Right. Our, our old business. Let's. Well, there was no stomach to do anything about it. I think drainage clarification with the building and or with the village and ET ordinance could come off of that. Drainage. I mean, the clarification's out of our hands at this at point. This point right? It's going to be you know, a declaratory you judgment, right? Yeah. ATV ordinance is off. What is communication to the public? I don't know what that is. I think that's a note. That's from Beth's generation. I think it was how it. strike it. I think that had to do with using front porch forum and Facebook more effectively. Switching to a social media standpoint. Less NBRC fun. with a positive bond vote. You know that we can take off because it's on the agenda every time too. Can we do, we're, we're turning it into an industrial park rather than it's really kind of not a bond vote issue yeah. anymore. And just relabel it. And yeah, industrial, industrial park. park is going to be. You can strike a library. With the library. library. Yeah, the library as needed. You could just put library, I think. Well, I think yeah. if it's a standing agenda item, we don't need it in old business. But Probably, but. It's. It's going to be prominent for a while. It's going to sit. It's going to be number yeah, it's going to be seven, and then early in the agenda, so they can get out of here every night. Omnipresent for a year and a half. Yep. Yeah, you could probably take it off. Well, not a year and a half. A year and a couple months. Yeah, yeah. as long as it gets included in the standard. Every other week. Yeah. Yeah. I just figure every two weeks we'll have the industrial park and the library. Yeah. That's yeah. an agenda item. Yeah. Yeah, every two weeks. Yeah, every two weeks. Oh, if there's a safe well, if we don't have to talk about anything, we can just say there's nothing to talk about. Thank you. Taking a library as needed. Taking a NBRC with positive bond vote. Nothing else for other points of note. Um, I think we're, he's just talking with Peter. Duncan, mm -hmm. okay. can you Got it. Yeah. remind me about rail trail liaison request oh. from Doug? Is that a decision we need to make tonight? Is that homework? For he two weeks? would like us to. I don't know that we need to make it tonight, but Doug and the Rail Trail Committee is really looking. Shane was the liaison with the Rail Trail Committee from the Select Board. Doug would really like to have a Select Board member serve as the liaison of the Rail Trail Committee. So if there's anybody that wants to volunteer, I guess uh, you could appoint them. Either you or I. I'm oh, I'm a short timer. I uh, the, they they uh, had a hard time finding a meeting, a regular meeting date. It happens to be the same time as my executive board meeting in Newport, so I just can't do it. I I, I would I wish I could have. I tried to move that one, um, and it does it entail going to another meeting? Every month, every two weeks, 
Uh, I honestly don't know. Do you want Do you want to talk with Doug? I mean, we don't have yeah. to make that appointment. Liaise tonight. on yourself for the next two weeks and I check will, back in. I will with will us. talk with Doug. Okay. okay. I love the red trails. You're big, very passionate about it. They got. I work for really it. hard to make it into a rail trail in the night. All right. Our last Our last agenda item is an executive session. And we'll go into executive session for the evaluation of employee under one VSA for one three eight. Motion on the floor is there a second? Second. Second. Would that be uh, board only? Board only. Okay. That was under further discussion. Okay. Any further, further Recording discussion? Recording stop.